Sports Radio 560 WQAM Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, call 5670560 toll free for data or pound 560 on your cell phone. The opinions of Neil, his guests, callers, or anyone else on the show do not necessarily reflect those of WQAM, Beasley Read Acquisitions, or the Beasley Broadcast. Wrong! Now, Neil Rogers on Sports Radio 560 QAM. It's Friday, you bastard. Sports Talk Radio 560 AM with the OJ Simpson and Warren Taylor Show. The most OJ and LT, but I just never know what to go. Now, here's OJ and LT. Yo, yo, and hey, 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 welcome to the house. Uh, OJ and LT. Mm-hmm. We be your sports talk friends. What you be eating, little man? I be eating my breakfast. What's up with you? You haven't touched your sausage. I don't have a knife. Here, use mine. Chill out, baby. I, I said a knife, not a machete. Well, I always keep one handy in case I encounter those Colombians who were killed by wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you be looking for them, huh? Mm-hmm, that's right. I know he'll show up on the golf course one day. Uh-huh. Speaking of that, did you hear about the Mitria Thunderworld? <laughs> Yo, he was having asshole. himself all by himself. He should have gave me a call. I'd do the job right, like slicing devil's hand. Oh, get you, devil you. By the way, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Water Nazi and Roy for giving us this opportunity of be having our own show. No, no one can squat like the Water Nazi. What you be talking about? We was outside the stadium the other day. Mm-hmm. I saw him squatting in the parking lot. Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, she went all right in every way. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, she was squatting and dipping and twisting and pissing mm-hmm. and uh, leaving souvenirs. Now I understand. And all this time, I thought I'd be kicking an alligator. Well, uh, who's that? Who that be? Who that be over there? That's the program director. What do you want? What do you want? You know you may act big and tough. Get out of here, you white pussy! <laughs> Six oh nine on WQAM. Thank you. Ten oh two at five sixty WQM. So every time we think that uh, maybe this thing might be fading into oblivion, something new and disgusting and embarrassing Roy. comes uh, facing us. I don't want to say who uh, brought this to my attention this morning, but I have in my hand the uh, well, what do they call this section? Like the weekend section in the Herald? Yes. Nightlife page twenty one G. As the embarrassment continues, you see, there, there's no level of embarrassment that can uh, that can affect, that can get through, that can penetrate the thick skull of the general manager of this radio station. No level of humiliation, embarrassment, degradation. It just uh, makes no difference. It just rubs off like a water off a duck's uh, rectum. Yeah. So they've got four pictures. You know, it's one of these uh, glitzy, uh, you know, plastic pages with the who is here and who is where. One of these social kind of uh, crap pages. And speaking of crap, the fourth picture down on the bottom, there are five assholes sitting at a dinner table. And the caption says, Sam Duque, Pedro Guerrero, O.J. Simpson, Christine Prodi, and Roy Foster at the ass store having dinner. Now, maybe there might be a sixth member in this group, but she's probably under the table at the moment. You know, the world's number one liar. So we continue being a buried. I mean, the, the psychosis and the crap that's going on. See, if this were a real company and a real radio station, there would be at least one, maybe a couple of heads that would have rolled out of this, been long gone from here already, days ago. But here we are a week later. And this golf tournament, and you'll remember way back in the beginning you know, when Tracy Carasado came to me, I said, uh, no. no, thanks. I know nothing about golf. I don't want to be associated with this. We're going to do just a fine job for Center One, which uh, starts today, by the way with our CDs and cassettes and our first appearance at Specs and the Sawgrass, noon to two tomorrow. We'll do just fine. We'll raise a lot of money. I don't want to get involved in something that I don't know anything about and that I don't want to be involved in. I don't, you know, and, and put it in the hands of other people. And as it turned out, putting it in the hands of these assholes was a disaster. Even the Japanese aren't seeing as much fallout from that the radiation, from that accident, nuclear plant accident they had yesterday. They're not seeing as much fallout as we're seeing from this mess. And then, of course, let me say it again. One of the world's top five assholes, Sam Duque, gets on there on TV last uh, weekend, last Friday night, and proudly announces as he's standing there next to a famous person, a celebrity, O.J. Simpson, that we raised $25,000 for Center One at this golf tournament. Did we raise $25,000 for Center One? No. No. 
there was a total of twenty five grand that was collected, but somewhere along the line, maybe it got shuffled into bookkeeping. I, I really don't know. I can't point any accusatory fingers, but a lot of people around here are kind of like wondering out loud. They're going like, "Hey, Neil, this is Randy West." Yeah, like that. And they're they're wondering just uh, well, you know, it's uh, early in the day. Yeah. Where the hell did the other twenty three grand go? Because Center One, out of all of this aggravation, out of all of this scandal, got about two grand. And the only monies that they got were from, like, the raffle and the silent auction that they had. The money that uh, came down from all the people who played in the golf tournament, I, and nobody can tell me where that money went. Oh, for expenses. Expenses. Okay. So we've been subjected to just a divisive, psychotic, I mean, I wish you could have seen the scene that was going on here yesterday, sponsor-related, by the way, all associated with this golf tournament and OJ and the assholes who subjected this place to it. It's unbelievable. It's incredible. That you could work in a company where there's just uh, just a void. There is no leadership here, baby. There's a vacuum, a vacuum between the ears. And every every re reasonable, responsible person in this building knows that I'm telling it the way it is. They know what I'm talking about. They know that we got four or five people in this place who operate with impunity. They can do whatever the hell they want. They can cause sponsor cancellations, cost us money. They can go in the media and lie. They could they could be out there with Jack the goddamn Ripper in public. Again, dragging this radio station down into the mud along with them, and nothing's going to happen. I mean, either it's the naked pictures I'm always joking about, or maybe there's just is that much of a vacuum between the ears in the management of this place. It's got to be one or the other. You can't possibly be oblivious. People in this place are foaming at the mouth about all of this. Just this picture this morning was like taking, rubbing salt in the wounds of all the sane people in this place, which there are a few of us, clinging to you know, some degree of sanity in the midst of an embarrassing, humiliating place. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. When, do, when does it end? When does it stop? When does this OJ disease Get cleaned out. I mean, I know we don't have an exterminator even for bugs in this joint because that costs money, and the Beasley people don't want to spend any money if they don't have to. They can get away with it. Just like this phone system that we're talking about. I had that meeting, the much-touted meeting with Greg Reed on Tuesday, and now come to find out three days later, it was all lip service. Nothing's happening. Our engineers are walking around going, yeah. like that, yeah. It's astonishing. It's just amazing. And like I said a few days ago, this place, they don't they don't like prosperity. They just don't like it. Things are going much too well here. Let's see if we can't go out in the Everglades with those crazy Cubans and shoot ourselves in the feet a few times. And they're doing a hell of a job of it, baby. Oh, yeah, they're doing a super job. Shooting themselves in the goddamn feet. Some of us are just speechless. And then when I watch some of the underlings here who are willing to suck up to the assholes like Sam Duque because he gets them a couple of free tickets to a ball game or something, shame on you people, okay? You're just as bad as he is. Some of the little pipsqueaks around here. Like dogs and cats waiting around for a little, for a scrap. Like, you know, like pigeons sitting in the park waiting for a scrap of bread. People with no principle, people with no, of course, they're, they're children, so what difference does it make? What do you expect? But the adults in this joint are humiliated, embarrassed, degraded, grossed out, nauseated by a solid week of O.J. Simpson disease that's caused a lot of grief and a lot of anguish and a lot of crap in this building. Sponsors, people on the air, those of us associated with Center One, everybody who was in any way involved in this thing, everybody who was on the air promoting that thing. Nine minutes after 10 at 560 WQM, you'll rely as much as we can get away with it, station. WQAM is proud to bring you the WQAM School of Broadcasting. Yes, you too can have an illustrious career in the wonderful world of radio, if you follow our curriculum. The course is free. Of course, you'll work for free. Call 1-800-WANNABE and speak to our Director of Education, Mr. Lenny Martez. No, you want me a broadcaster. Oh, a what? A broadcaster, a broadcaster. Yeah. No, broadcaster. Well, right. can you say news? Deep. News, news. No, news, news. Yeah. news. No, it's not news, it's news. News. 
you uh, I'll take you on a tour. You need help. <sighs> Here we have the Joe Rose Beginners Course. Wait, 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 wait. Repeat after me, man. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. It's good. Wait, 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 wait. Over here we have the obsessive delivery rules. We know what you need. We need to get sick of his car. We're going to do it. Kill us right now. Repeat after me. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. can hear your own voice. Let the WQAM School of Broadcasting provide you with the essential tools you'll need to make your wet radio dreams come true. I mean, uh, one come true. Where's your Exactly. 1015 at 560 WQAM. So anyway, uh, somebody was just telling me, Hank said the other day, and I would echo the uh, sentiments, that he doesn't want Sam having anything to do with his show in any way, shape, or form. And, of course, I will say the same, although, quite frankly, he don't do anything for the show anyway. Nothing. Or for any other show, for that matter. You're an asshole, Sam. You're despised and detested by all with a brain and even a tiny ball in this building. You're nauseating. Why you're here is the greatest mystery in the history of mankind. And then, of course, there's... Roy! Which we all know what that's all about. I guess it's called stud fees. I mean, we've got, you know, people think that I make this stuff up. Anybody that would see what goes on, the intermachinations in this building, it, it's unconscionable. It's, it's unprecedented in the history of the uh, business, any business, monkey business, where a man just allows with all the revenue that's coming through this place. How much money is Sam bringing in here? Is he bringing in any money? No. Well, he got any ratings? No. How about uh, Roy? Has he sold any accounts since he's been here? No. No. What, have you got any ratings? No. What's the claim to fame? for people going out of their way to rub our collective noses in all of this OJ crap. What does it take to convey the message, we're not impressed, we're not interested, we're, discre- we're disgusted, we're embarrassed, we're humiliated, we're grossed out. We don't want anything to do, just like most other decent people from coast to coast, not only coast to coast, all around the world. Even in Europe, when he tried to hide his nose there, they said, basically, go to hell away, we want nothing to do with you. It's not because I'm a hard ass or Hank or anybody else. It's virtually the entire building, except, of course, for some of those sports nerds I was talking about yesterday who all they know about is, oh, guess what? The Mets lost again last night. Oh! Thank God. I was going to, like, start off with the uh, Jesse Ventura stuff, which I have it all. Thanks, by the way, to our good buddy Eric with our website, who's on top of everything. He likes it on top, he said. Faxes me the whole thing about Jesse Ventura. And you know something? It's thank God for Jesse Ventura. Jesse the body, baby. He's our man more than ever. You want to know why? Because he doesn't back down. He's not one of these people that says, well, what I really meant was this, and what I really meant to say was that, and I didn't want to offend anybody. No, he said, I don't back down from my statements. And he said, the religious people, they're always talking about forgiveness, so they'll forgive me. That's their big thing. But the Catholic League and this league and the religious nuts, they're all psychotic and pissed off. Meantime, his approval rating last month in Minnesota as governor was 73%, a record high. Never anybody in history has had a, a number like that. And the exact quote in his Playboy interview was, after saying he wants to be reincarnated as a size 38 double D bra, I mean, how can anybody, you know, how can any heterosexual guy oh! argue with that? He blamed organized religion for the unpopularity of legalized prostitution, which he said is to be should be considered. Legalized weed, legalized prostitution, this is my kind of candidate. Wants this to be a real country, live in a real goddamn world, like in the Netherlands. He says organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak-minded people who need strength in numbers. 
It tells people to go out and stick their noses in other people's business. He later added, the religious right wants to tell people how to live. He and his uh, wife, Terry, are members of a local church. However, they don't frequently uh, go there, as in maybe never or close to it. He says college athletes shouldn't have to take classes to play. He says if you go to college to play football, why don't they teach you how to deal with agents? Of women's wrestling, he says women's wrestling can thank silicone. Breast implants are what make it popular. Before that, it was right up there with midgets and added attraction. About attractive women, he says, I've always been attracted to brunettes more than blondes. I enjoy women whose bodies are real. Jesse says, I don't care for the ones who've had breast implants and their lips done. How do you like that? I've got two sets of lips. Yeah, I'll bet. So what do you think she's doing under the table at the Astor in that picture there? You can just see uh, her backside. Having a little bit of an appetizer, maybe? 21G in the Herald this morning in the uh, nightlife, on the Nightlife page. More embarrassment for 560 WQAM. The embarrassment just never stops. The O.J. Simpson disease never stops. And I'm speaking for a lot of people in this building, like I said, all the rational ones, when I tell you we're sick and tired of this crap. We want nothing to do with him. We don't want to be associated with him. We don't want to be associated with the sick people in this building who got their heads up his ass, not to mention any names. Roy! Here's Miami. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I've been waiting with bated breath to, to see, hear you talk about how much money Center One finally got. Yeah. You know, it's called appearance money. You don't think O.J. played in that golf tournament for free, do you? I, I haven't got any idea where the other $23,000 went. I can guarantee you that he was paid to be there. No, he wasn't paid. He, if he was paid, it was unbeknownst to this radio station because he wasn't, wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. I'm, I'm shocked if he, if he played out of, the, out of the goodness and kindness of his own No, heart. no, I, I, think, I think he played because he was invited because we have people in this building who wanted to use him kind of like as a weapon and to show me and some other people that they're going to do whatever the hell they want and that he's their buddy and they're going to bring him in whether we want one day they've been told not to. Or, it's like a game. It's like a contest here. It's like a pissing contest. That's they're going to show us. That, like I said yesterday, O.J. Simpson is like a weapon. At for three hundred dollars a head for for center one to wind up with only two thousand dollars right is, uh, is and for and for the promotions director to go on local television standing next to this murdering son of a bitch and announce proudly that we raised twenty five thousand dollars in this event for center one and to lie like that through his teeth when he knows damn well that they only got about two grand there's something wrong here man where's the credibility of this radio station now somebody's getting, getting fat off that tournament. yeah where's our credibility I guess we don't care about it obviously not. We'll bring in Sherlock Holmes, pal. Find out where the other twenty-three grand went. Five six seven zero five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line as this business just goes on and on and on. I, I you know, I shouldn't say where, where it stops. It, uh, nobody knows because it's never going to stop. Because the guy that has the ability and the authority and the power to stop it, he won't do anything. You know. He's still running around going, yeah. Yeah, oh, gee, it wasn't that bad, was it? Oh, yeah, it wasn't that Mr. Uh, play everything down because you might actually have to take some affirmative action and do something. Can't do it. Just can't do it. Weak. Weak would be a compliment. Here's a mobile in Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I think your first caller hit it on the head there. Uh, he, he didn't do that golf tournament for nothing. Uh, that, and there, I would think there would be a paper trail somewhere. Uh don't they have to account for where that money went to to, to either the IRS? I, I, I would assume so. I don't. I don't. But around here, who's accountable to anybody? I don't know where the money went. I don't well, think least, anybody. I don't think anybody. The, the the term that was used was it went for expenses. Expenses for what? I don't. I don't know what that means. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's got to be a paper trail. If they spent the money, there should be receipts uh, for tax deductions or however, however the business is run or whatever. But yeah. Uh, you see that paper today? Kevin Hatcher's gone. New yeah. York got him. Ain't that a shame? Well, the Rangers are loaded. They got uh, everybody yeah. now. A $63 million payroll, they're going to buy the cup. Well, they, if they're not good this year, then they got no excuses, boy. They're just loaded. Yeah. All right, Neil, you have a good day, buddy. Thank you. And, of course, we got, uh, you know, Todd Simpson, no relation to O.J. And this this garbage about, well, you know, he's big and he's tough. And and then the papers keep coming up with the same crap. Oh, well, you know, he, he's going to be used to uh, protect uh, Pavel Burry. I think we just call out the National Guard. I mean, that's what it sounds like with this organization. Let's have the National Guard out there on the ice to make sure nobody gets near Pavel. 
it, it's it's embarrassing, really, is what it boils down to. And then Dave Hyde has like kind of a half-assed column today, lack of action will haunt Panthers. And I read the whole thing from start to finish, and as usual, does he say anything? No. no he doesn't say a goddamn thing. These local newspapers, man, more words are uh, utilized to say absolutely nothing than anywhere in the history of mankind. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Well, let's see some of those expenses. Limousine fees, round-trip air flight, the airplane Round-trip airfare was paid for on TWA vouchers that were vouchers. sent in that are a trade-out with it. I mean, all you people that want to start making things up who don't know what's going on in here, I mean, it'll kill some good time, but there's not any point in it. Well, I mean, there's an awful lot of expenses. How about the uh, cost of putting them in a hotel? Yeah. Uh, the cost I, I don't know, sir. I'm not going to sit here and conjecture. I don't know. I don't have the information. I think somebody ought to be accountable to what's in the center one where all that money went to, especially in light of the fact that our promotions guy went on a year and announced that we raised twenty five grand for center one, and they got 2000 It leaves $23,000. Where did the money go? This this thing was a source of such unbelievable embarrassment and humiliation to everybody in this radio station, everybody connected with it, and in the meantime, we can't get any answers. All we get is yeah. double talk and lip service. Pardon that expression. Here's a mobile in Jupiter. Hello. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. If your uh, promotions director went on TV can't, doesn't and saying how much they, they had, can't send a one... Uh, take legal action or something, say, or contact the IRS or take, something. Take legal action about what? The fact that we got a liar here? Well, well, what are they going to sue him for, lying? No, but if he said that they, they raised that much, they could say, well, you you claimed it. We're not, it's not going to work. And he can say, well, I uh, lied. Or I was mistaken. We raised twenty five grand, but there were the expenses. He can say whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, I guess. Okay, thanks, Neil. Okay, pal. I mean, like I said before, there is nobody here to make anybody in this radio station accountable for anything. So they can go on the air and say, we raised $5 million for Center One. We raised $100 million. It was great. It was, uh, look at what we did. Look what I did. That a boy, Sam. I knew you must have done something besides have dinner at the Astor with OJ and Roy and that uh, embarrassing uh, crowd of yours. With, with a picture in the newspaper. First, it's on television. Here's the picture in the newspaper. Maybe we'll have a picture of all of them in a big circular bed together. Maybe that'll be next. It's so hard to be myself Because the group that I'm in Sounds like everyone else on the charts and the old dance. And we sing just like girls and we wear really tight things. Are we the cheap boys? Or are we men in condition? Or anything cause I'm confused. Got no clue. Don't know what band I'm in. Baby, it's boy to men. The sounds all around. Every group sounds the same. Yeah, we're painfully lame. Casey and JoJo. And boy, it's on too. Joey McIntyre sounds just like us. I'm confused. I'm just confused. All I'm asking is someone please explain. Cause I'm confused. I'm confused. I don't know what to think. But I know this song sticks. Nobody knows who we are, that's the truth. Oh, we're asking, can you tell us our name? Cause we're confused. Man, I'm so confused. We're confused.
1032 at 560 WQAM. So anyway, tell tell the story that you just told me on the uh, from the phone call you just got, the guy from Lago Mar about our famous golf tournament a week ago today. So the sign goes in on Wednesday. There's a the, guy from uh, somewhere brings a sign to Lago Mar. Right. It says QAM golf tournament featuring OJ and LT. Yeah. Members of the clubhouse pitch a fit to the promotions person there at Lago Mar. The promotions person says, oh, no, it's just a publicity thing to entice people to uh, sign up. He won't really be here, OJ. Mm -hmm. We know the rest of the story. Yeah. Same people. Pitch a fit to the management. We were told this guy wasn't going to be here. We don't want to be associated with a golf club that's going to have this murdering asshole here. Promotions guy's on probation. Might get canned. Largo Mar doesn't want to do anything with WQAM anymore. That's the rest of the story. Okay. There's the rest of the story. As we continue, you know, suffering, like I tell you, from O.J. Simpson disease, we got four or five people in this building who have a terminal case. It's like leprosy, you know. I think there needs to be, like they have leper colonies, there needs to be an island somewhere, maybe like Alcatraz, and just take all these people that suffer from O.J. Simpson disease and stick him out there with them. They can entertain each other all day. They can wine and dine with each other. They can sit around and have a big circle jerk together. In fact, maybe in the Miami Circle, let's just remove it surgically and, you know, float it out to sea. That'll solve that problem, too, and save us millions of dollars. The embarrassment just doesn't stop. I mean, I've never seen one event. It, it's like a, it's like the aftershocks of an earthquake. You know how it keeps, you know, it subsides for a little bit. Then all of a sudden, here comes another one. Here comes another tremor, you know, and on and on it goes, and it doesn't stop. Because that's the nature of the almost, almost universal, except for idiotic, stupid people and jock snippers who are idiotic, stupid people. Except for those people, the revulsion is almost universal for this individual, for this murderer who we wish would just go away. We've heard more than enough about him. We don't want to hear no more. We don't want to see him. We don't want to know from him. And here we are like stuck in the middle with Jews. Five six seven oh five sixty. Nobody interested in Jesse Ventura, by the way, or his comment about organized religion being a sham. Which thank God that there's somebody beside Neil Rogers in this country. Is I mean, who the hell am I, you know, with a flunky little radio show down here that came by a goddamn phone call? I mean, I'm nobody. But here's a guy that's a governor of Minnesota who's being talked about as a presidential contender one of these years. Not soon enough for to suit me. And he's got the balls to say organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak-minded people who need strength in numbers. It's like a freaking club for weak people. How many times have I said that? Eight billion times over the years. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesse. God bless you. Of course, that'll probably finish him off as far as any chance for, you know, any kind of national office because you just can't say those things in America. You offend the weak-minded masses. And the Catholic League is psychotic with Jesse Ventura. Oh, how could you say that, yada, yada? Too bad. Can't handle, handle the truth, can you? You grave robbers. You faggots, you. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. Listen, I um, do about four or five golf tournaments here. I'm involved with production. And um, while your event will survive any kind of an audit, because you can write off damn near anything, if the numbers are true, that is way disproportionate about what normally goes to charity. And so, well, um, in what respect? What do you mean? Well, typically it's the other way around. We do a golf tournament to raise money for charity. Our expenses shouldn't exceed forty or fifty percent of our revenue. Right. And you're saying it was the other way around. You, spent, you raised twenty-five grand and gave two away. Right. In other, in other words, in other words, they got less than ten percent. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, you basically you're ripping off 8%. somebody. Somebody's ripping off charity here. Mm-hmm. Whoever promoted your golf. Or yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna find out where all that money went. I'm gonna demand an audit of this on behalf of Center One. Find out where all that money went. I mean, you know, especially since we got screwed on this and embarrassed and humiliated, and all these people went around, you know, our backs and brought in OJ and uh, you know made, made the whole thing into an embarrassing disaster. The least that they owe us is an accounting for where all that money went to. Oh, I think not only an accounting, but I think um, to make good on what they had proposed. I mean, if you if you see the expenses went to OJ, I'd write those off and make them write a check to Center One for the difference. Yeah. Or else. Well, well I'll, I'll hold my breath along with the Browns yeah. and the Goldens. We're not going to go after your advertisers. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. What is there to say? Maybe, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Maybe at long last, because Greg Reed was just in here hyperventilating during the last break. Maybe finally, this is what it took to make him understand that we got some real, real sick puppies in our midst here. 
Just like John Dean told uh, Nixon, we got a cancer in here, baby. We got a goddamn big, gigantic tumor is what we got. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. I got a question. I, ha- I haven't been able to listen as much this week, um, and I hear you talking about O.J., is it still in the talks about him getting something on the radio, or is this just about a golf tournament? Is it in the talks where? Sure as hell not here. Uh, oh, good, because, you know, the only upside I can see to that prick having a um, radio show is that we could call in and abuse the crap out of him. Yeah, well, it would, it would last about 15 minutes, and he'd get up and run out of here, or he would limp out of here. You know what? I don't understand. I You, you see people, and I, I know this to be true, that have met him at events here, that swear up and down he's guilty, but when they get in his presence, they suck his they hands. forget everything. That's right. They shake oh, his yeah. hand, they kiss his butt. Because he was an ex-jock, because he's a celebrity, he's famous. That's why our buddy Sam over here across the hall, that's why he's upset. Anybody who's famous, it doesn't make any difference what they do, Sam will go and uh, kiss their ass. Well, you know, if anybody has any doubt about the savagery of that, that killing, those killings, uh, pull up www.rotten.com on the Internet and look at uh, the autopsy pictures of Nicole and Ron Goldman. Yeah. Uh just unbelievable what he did to those folks. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I just want to share. If he calls, I'll say. I mean, if he ever gets on the airways for anything, uh, me and my office will call every freaking day and abuse the crap out of him. We'll <laughs> fax him. We'll do everything. Uh, he will not stand a chance in Hollywood. I got news. He, for he you. wouldn't last ten minutes, man. He's a prick, first class. Okay. Hey, can I call a couple people douchebags? Sure, go ahead. Danny, Subai, um, Robin, I'm... and Jeff, you're a bunch of douchebags. Okay, Thank see you, Neil. I'm easy today. I couldn't care less. I'll just struggle to make it through the four hours today. Oh, it's a, this This is just, it's, it's unspeakable. It's unbelievable what goes on in this joint. The lunatics are running the asylum. They're in charge. They got the keys to the kingdom. And the rest of us, we're like, uh, you know, we have to suffer the fallout. We have to suffer the humiliation and the embarrassment along with it. Oh, we want to do this for you, Neil. We want to do this for your charity to raise some extra money. We want to do something to make you happy, to please you. Oh, yeah, I'm pleased as punch like Hubert Humphrey. Of course, look at him. He ain't doing too good. They really did. And I'm going to tell you something. Your boy, even though he wasn't here when this all came down, your boy that you were so high on, Tracy Carasado, he showed me nothing while he was here. Absolutely, positively nothing. He wasn't working with us. And that's not the point. In any respect, in any way, shape, or form, and he was the one that spawned this thing. And let it get in the hands of a bunch of crazy people. Showed me nothing, Tracy. Zero. zippity doo including the day he wandered out of here and never came in to say, uh, screw you, goodbye, and up your ass. Anything. But nevertheless, I like those swing clubs, though. It's Friday, you bastard. I sing a low tone, I am a baritone, with me some notes cannot be found, but somehow I can't believe they want me to do this, I know what I can reach, and this ain't gonna happen, oh no. It's too high, too high for me, too high key, it's too high, someone kick me right back there in my head feet. Oh, it's too high, too high for me. What'd you kick me for? <laughs> Ten forty-five at five, and I like that song too. Tell Bachman it's a great song, but nevertheless, and I like the uh, ninety-eight degrees, but nevertheless, five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. A couple of really uh, one good letter to the editor in the Sun Sentinel this morning, and then there's one that's just so typical and so idiotic: gun control rhetoric for global government. One of those one world conspiratorial wackos. Oh, this is a great letter, which I'll get to eventually, as soon as I calm down. Put my brain back where it in the socket where it used to be. Stick my brain in my rectum where it's comfortable. Here's Miami Lakes. Hello. Oh, 
how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. Hey, Neil, uh, you're right. I want you to agree along with the governor. I really do do think that uh, organized religion is number the big scam. Right. And also, Neil, uh, they are making a big deal about these sexual predators, right? That they have to register, right? Yeah. Uh, what about the ones in the church, the preachers? They, they got to do the same thing, too? Oh, no, they're exempt. you got to understand. We can't oh, do but, that. But, uh, but, but I'm serious what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. All right, no, no, but you look at look at the for example, if you go and molest a bunch of children, you're going to go to jail. Your ass will go right, to jail for a long right. time if they convict you. But with a church, with a priest, what they do is they reassign them. You know, they send them for counseling, maybe if they get caught, and then they reassign them so they can go molest children in some other part of the country where they don't uh, uh, where they're unsuspecting. Right, because uh, because we we hear so many cases of them all over the country. You know? Right, that's right. All right, now you have a nice day. And back to you. Of course, they're isolated. And since you don't understand that, don't you? They're just isolated. Only a few thousand here and a few thousand over there. Here's a lady in Kendall. Hello. Neil? Yes, ma'am. Look on page 20 of the weekend. Your friends, San Duque and Christy and all the ma'am, I've been talking about that for a half an hour. Well, I just turned your radio on. I'm well aware. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's page 21. G. Oh. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five, but you see people are finding it, and even though I don't usually read that section, a lot of people will, and they'll see that picture there, and they'll say, "Oh my God, that looks like that murdering son of a bitch." And there's two guys from uh, QAM that we're always hearing about, Sam Duque and what's his name, Roy Foster, who's yanking a whole bunch of money out of this place every month and uh, bringing nothing in. He's the face man, you know. He's the stud, the stallion, the Schwarzer stallion. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. It's just amazing the little empire, right, Luann? Oh, did we have a meeting on Tuesday or what, huh? You know, if Pinocchio, if that thing about your nose growing just like Bubba, remember that time I said that it looked like his nose was growing when he came on TV? If that Pinocchio thing, she'd have a nose so long they'd have to they'd have to bring her in the building sideways. Liar, liar, pantaloons on fire, sweetheart. Everybody's here got a different story, man. They weave and they wobble and they maneuver. They ought to be professional boxers. They got moves that uh, even Mike Tyson would be impressed by. Just unbelievable. But you can only evade the obvious for so long, okay, before you get caught in the tail and the tangle of your own BS and lies. Here's a mobile in Delray Beach. Hello. Hey, Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Buenos dias. Happy Friday to you. And back to you. Happy October 1. Hey, I say uh, Jesse the body for president, man. Right, right now. This guy, how does this guy walk? He's got the biggest uh, cojones around. That's right. He's got balls like an elephant. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there watching the uh, Today Show, and when they said that, I almost fell out of my chair. And they did, too, from what I hear. I wish I would have seen it. I don't watch that show, but evidently Katie Couric nearly uh, dropped the load right there in the chair. Oh, yeah. She couldn't believe it. She was like, oh, my yeah. God. This is terrible. Mm-hmm. All I, right. I, well, hear that, I hear that Al Roker's got hair growing on his head now just from uh, the shock. That's what oh, I hear. Yeah. Bless you. Okay. Jesse for president, baby. Oh, you can't have somebody like that who doesn't uh, support organized religion. Let me say it again. Let me read. I should just read that quote all day. This not coming from Neil Rogers, that heathen fag bastard. This coming from somebody who's the governor of Minnesota. Somebody who's a big, macho guy with a brain who understands what real life is all about. Organized prostitution, decriminalization of marijuana. Let's get the goddamn weed people out of jail. Let's get government off our backs. Let's get all these goddamn goody two-shoes uh, moralists off our, out of our lives. Here's the guy we've been looking for for a zillion years. Of course, he's bad for business, you realize, for the religionists. He's bad for their business. That's why they're, that's why they're reacting like uh, they're psychotic now. They're having a nervous breakdown. Organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak-minded people who need strength in numbers, the governor told the Playboy interviewer. It tells people to go out and stick their noses in other people's business. The religious right wants to tell people how to live. In other words, to paraphrase what I'm always telling you, intolerance, that's what it's all about. Religion breeds intolerance, hatred. My religion's better than yours is. I got the answers you don't. You're going to burn in hell. I'm going to be up there in hell. And yada, 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 and so it goes, because I believe these fairy tales and you don't. My fairy tales are the right fairy tales. Yours suck. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T right. Oh, and by the way, the update on the Michelle Gillen piece on Channel Four and the kids with their lunches, which we had a very very marginal response on here yesterday. Like everything else, I've been doing for twenty three years here, except giving away free crap. The update is that uh, now they've got. I think it was Coral Park High School. Coral Park Senior High, 
they're um, letting the uh, not letting the freshmen and the uh, sophomores leave campus for lunch hour. But the problem is that they still can't get served lunch because the lines are too long. And by the time they get up there, they run out of food anyway. So they interviewed a bunch of the kids who said, "Well, the deal is now we'll just have to skip lunch." There you go. There's a solution to the problem. Oh. Let them eat uh, not even Marie Antoinette. Let them eat uh, uh, cake. Let them eat nothing. That's a solution here to the problem with the not being able to feed the kids in school. And here, and by the way, speaking of that, and speaking of the stadium and all this other crap that they're trying to siphon tax money to billionaires, Marlon's owner gives a million dollars to help fund Boca Stress Center. And here's the picture. Look at this. This man is the most bizarre, twerpy individual I've ever seen in my life. With his hand, it looks like it's a stick up. In fact, I think he's got it backward. I think he's the one that's trying to stick us up. John Henry with his hands up in the air in this picture here in the Sun Sentinel this morning. Unbelievable. And we're supposed to be all excited about him. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Because he donates a million dollars to help fund the Boca Stress Center because he thought he was dying with an irregular heartbeat. Come to find out it wasn't a heart problem. It was stress. Which, of course, we know a lot about here at QAM. Especially this morning. So he's donating a million dollar gift uh, translating into the creation of the John W. Henry Center for Integrated Medicine in a hospital owned building on Clintmore Road in Boca. The center will house the Mind and Body Institute. Well, you know, that's very nice. Of course, it's a good tax write-off, and it's good public relations. But in the meantime, how can he afford to be given a million dollars away to charity when we're supposed to raise him uh, three or $400 million to build a stadium when he's always crying poor mouth? And by the way, I was watching a little bit of the uh, CBC News last night out of Montreal, and the Montreal Expos, certainly one of the worst teams in the history of baseball, averaged 9,000 people a game this past season. 9,000 people a game. And for the second year in a row, there was a lot of debate about whether it's the end of the franchise, are they going to have to move, are they going to have to disband the franchise. And it looks like they're going to come back again next year and be able to reorganize. Why? Because they didn't lose any money. They averaged 9,000 people a game, and they didn't lose any money. And they're honest enough to say, at least admit it. How do you like that? It goes back to what Hank was talking about there months ago about that uh, fanciful uh, ba- bookkeeping that Wayne is famous for. Always giving us cr- poor mouth, poor mouth. We lost millions. We lost this. We lost that. And then the numbers keep changing, you know. Always a real, just like kind of with that golf tournament. Oh, we raised 25000 for Center One. Did we? No. Well, no, but it sounds good. In other words, here's an aggregate of $25,000 in total that was raised, of which... 2,000 went to the charity that this tournament was allegedly for. Where did the other $23,000 go? Inquiring minds are going to find out. We want an accounting, and we want it next week. Here's a mobile in Delray Beach. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. You know, I've listened to your show for years and years and always heard your stick about the management. And... uh now, you know, you hit the nail right on the head with this OJ thing. You can tell your sponsors that there's a lot of us that listen to the show that just we're not going to listen anymore. We're not going to use the sponsors. We don't like to have it rubbed in our face. We're not crazy. Right. And in the same thing with John Henry. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Yeah. He is. How can he How can he ask us for tax dollars when he's given a million bucks away? Mm-hmm. I just don't understand that, that, it. That, to me, was just like that other picture with the, the OJ and Sam Douchebag and Roy Foster. It was like the other it's like somebody slapping you in the face. Absolutely. The same with Henry there. I mean, don't ask me for money and then give a million dollars right. away. You're crazy. Right. You're crazy. And, you know, this thing I with OJ. I must be crazy. Like, I must be nuts. I, I can't imagine what your management was thinking. I love your show and I, I love... Wait, wait you know, a minute. Our I, management was thinking? Well, yeah, I guess that's... Now you're getting a little carried away, sir. Now you're getting, okay. uh, you're losing a grip on reality. Well, you know, I would, uh, you know, I would have gladly used some of your sponsors now, but the way that I cast my vote is the same way that you've told us for years. Just don't do it. And, and you know, they if they're listening, they're to blame. Nobody so, else. So, in other words, what you're saying is that the audience ought to penalize all the rest of us and all of our sponsors because we had two or three people in here that pulled a behind-the-scenes deal that the rest of us are decrying here on the air? Because you, the, the, the station management, not yeah. necessarily you, it's, you know, you're... You're casualty of the war, mm-hmm. but I mean, how else? What else can we say? We we keep should we keep listening when we know that no, they promoted OJ? I, I would turn it off right now. I turn it off right now. Would be a good idea. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. That that sounds like a real good loyal listener to me. Blame me for the fact that Roy Foster and Sam Duque and maybe one or two other assholes inflicted these people and also screwed up the people at Lago Mar and made our sponsors and all of us and everybody else look bad. Blame me for that. Punish me for that. Turn it off right now, sir, and have a great life. Thank you so much for all your dedicated years of listening. This fall on CBS, meet a small town priest who speaks the word of God and adds a few choice words of his own. It's Father Tourette's Mysteries. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join together this f***ing damn f***ing little sucker mother in holy matrimony. Father Tourette Mystery, a new kind of family drama from the producers of Chicago Hopeless and NYPD Blue Ball. Oh boy, oh you f***ing slut, oh you little poor bag monger, you f***ing bastard you. Sunday, this fall, spend an hour with Father Tourette right after an all-new season of Touchdown There by an Angel, only on CBS. There's no facts in, in the shirt. It's 11.01 at 5.60 WQM. I think that last guy made a lot of sense. You know what? Let's punish Neil and Hank and the, the morning guys, everybody else on the station, because we don't like the management, because we're disgusted with their behavior. I know about myself. I listen to radio shows because I like the management of that particular station. I know when I watch a TV show or even a sporting event, I want to make sure that I like the management of that network or that station before I turn it on or subsidize their sponsors. I know if I go to a restaurant, I want to make sure, you know, no matter how good the food may be, I want to make sure they don't advertise on a station that I don't like the management of. Sir, you're just, it, it's, I'm embarrassed for you. In fact, why don't we also punish Center One, too? Let's not buy the best of Neil CDs or cassettes. Let's not show up at Specs tomorrow just to show Greg Reed our displeasure with him. So let's punish other people who had nothing to do with this. Let's punish the people who are exposing it and laying it out on the table there for you and trying to get something done about it. Let's punish them. Thank you, sir, for your tremendous loyalty and support. You're a typical South Floridian, man. You're exactly what this town is all about. Like I've told you before, you make a friend someplace else, you got a friend for life, maybe. You make a friend here, you got a friend for about five minutes. Maybe. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. That's why we all need to join a fraternity. Oh! There you go, so we can take some good showers together. Here's Boca. Hello. I'm glad you just mentioned that, Neil, about the fraternity, because I just had. Uh... A thought driving yesterday, the day before, when you were talking about the fraternities. Mm -hmm. uh, I might be wrong. I don't want to spread a rumor, but I'm pretty sure that I remember when Roy Foster got uh, drafted. He came from USC. Right. That's and right. Does, what, what it's you an OJ that, thing. Yeah. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be sort of? Don't you, don't you think the jocks have sort of their own fraternity? Oh, absolutely. More than anybody else, no question. I mean, in reality, too, there is a. Uh, he and OJ are joined at the hip. So that They're kind of that kind of proves that that, that running. On the beach naked stuff kind of sticks with you. You have a friend for life. No right. What. In fact, I think that picture is going to be in tomorrow's Herald. Roy and OJ running naked on the beach on South Beach. Oh, that would that would do. Mm -hmm. And Sam I'm will sure be right there, right on their ass end. And the other reason that I watch uh, football on NBC is because I like GE light bulbs so much. Yeah, me too. It makes sense. Well, I used to too until Reagan got involved. You know. Oh well, that's uh, let's punish ourselves. That's a typical Florida reaction. How do you like that guy, huh? I think you don't need him uh, listening because he's. Uh, yeah, let's just say goodbye to him. Because if he wants to punish himself, let him do it. I'd rather listen to you no matter what. Thank you, sir. God Thank bless you. you. I'll pray for you. Bye. 5670560. Oh, Look at this resounding response here again this morning. Huh? It's the uh, same old crap. I don't really care. I'm, I'm in another world today. I can't tell you how many times on this station I've come in and done a show, and by the time I get done, I've asked myself, how the hell did I get through these four hours today? I mean, my mind is so disheveled and so twisted and so uh, unglued here. I came in this morning feeling just fine, as chipper as can be, walked in the door not knowing what to expect. And right away it starts with George Corso said this, and this one said that, and then we look at the program log, and it turns out Luann is lying again, which for the eight-minute time this week. How many pictures do you got, Luann? And like I said, I've, I've said this so many times since I've been here. There's so many people in this place I don't ever want to see again. I don't want to see them. I don't want to do business with them. I don't want to know from them. I don't want to hear about them. I don't want to see them even. Because I'm de they're detestable, they're disgusting, they're nauseating, they're puke-inducing, they're unprofessional, they're liars, they're disgusting, they like tear away at your life, at your very existence. Who needs that? Luann? Just lie and lie and lie and do all of these things and, oh, God, if you had any idea, if it's a good thing I like uh, that person I talked about yesterday, or I would tell that story that I promised I wouldn't and I won't. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Fort Myers. Hello. Hello. Yes, yeah. sir. A couple things I want to say real quick. For one thing, I think your uh, management knows everybody in the apology. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop listening to the show. I like everybody on the show. I'm in Fort Myers. I got Brad Collins. I got you in the morning, Hank. And I'm what, not going to stop. What listening. more could you want? Right. Well, I'm, I come from Detroit, and the radio up there is a little different. But I know I'm not going to stop listening to the program because. Idiots and management made it because I'm managing like the bonehead, right? And they need, to, and then they need to either put a written one in some newspapers or get on the air and apologize. Yeah, how would it be if Greg Reed recorded an apology that we could play on the air, saying that the station regrets the embarrassment and that we had nothing to do with that, and you know what? To apologize it, it, to the people at Lago Bar and the sponsors. I mean, that would be like a professional thing to do is to have him record yes, an yes. apology that we could play a few times a day. I agree. And second thing, um, the organized religion. My girlfriend is a Catholic. I'm an atheist. It doesn't interfere with our relationship. Oy. She goes to she goes to church because she likes the sense of community. She likes knowing all of her neighbors. Her mom goes with her husband, and you know, so she's not a fanatic about it. She doesn't preach it. She doesn't you know tell me that we have to get married in a church with this priest and this and that. And uh, so I, she doesn't obsess about the uh, you know having to belong to a group or anything. And it's kind of refreshing to see someone that doesn't uh, you know cram it down everyone's throat and up their ass, so to speak. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I'll pray for all right. you. All right, good night, Thanks a lot. Okay, 600 open lines here, 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. We'll be at Specs tomorrow at the Sawgrass Mills Mall from noon to 2, right by the Blue Dolphin entrance of the Sawgrass, right near Ruby Tuesdays, off Flamingo Road, near Rooms to uh, Go, with our Center One CDs, our best of 99 CDs and cassettes. 567 0560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Why do you always stick up for Hank Goldberg? He's a fat piece of crap. Yeah, uh-huh. Because I like Hank Goldberg. Hank's been great to me since I've been on this station. And, the, you know, you assholes that want to start, you know, like the guy that called me a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I used to like it better when you were on the other station. You used to poke fun at Hank. Well, you know, sometimes we were competitors, but I always said one thing. I have no problem with Hank. And I'm glad that I said that because I didn't have a problem with him then, and I especially don't have a problem with him now. And I appreciate it. I even told him this off the air yesterday. Thank God for him being the one guy in this place who stands up for the things that make sense and having the balls to be a little bit passionate about the right things, whether it was the penny sales tax, whether it was about John Henry and his goddamn uh, stadium. So, you know, if you don't like Hank, don't listen to him. But don't give me a lecture about the goddamn uh, Hank Goldberg, okay? He's fine in my book. He's the champion in my book, in this place. We've got a few spineless jellyfish in this place who off the air got a big mouth, but other than that, they got uh, nothing to say because they're, you know, scared for their job. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Davy. Hello, Davey. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Neil, I really, I really enjoy your show. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a mobile in Miramar. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Good morning. How are you? Okay. Um, Neil, I agree that uh, certainly the on-air personality should not in any way be punished for. The, putting it mildly, the misdeeds of, of the management of the station. My concern is, uh, as, as as a general listener, though, is that your sponsors, if if, if this becomes a a, a uh, an occurring issue, whether it's OJ or someone else, yeah. are going to clearly start backing away from the station. It may not be something that happens immediately, but it'll have an impact. And eventually will have an impact on the on air personalities. And my question is, I got a good contract. They got to pay me regardless. I, I realize if, if that. If they have no spots, they still got to pay me. That's their problem. But, but it's a damn shame, Neil. And and and, and I guess my <laughs> my question is, can you please tell me specifically what is the position? If 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 maybe that's maybe that's too much. Prone. To ask the answer is no matter what, what the what the rest of, rest of the question is. Prone is the answer. The position of what? of the management uh, with regard to this O.J. debacle. I, I can't speak for the management. They're going to, like I said, he should have a, something on the air. He should be speaking for himself. You know, I work for a major corporation in a senior management capacity, but I mentioned that for one reason. If I were to have done what Mr. Duquette did and Mr. Foster did, I would not have a job. Hey, any, uh, sir, any other radio station I've ever worked at in my life, especially considering the minimal contributions of the two people you just mentioned, any other place I've ever worked, those two would be, have been history uh, over the weekend last weekend, and we'd be uh, moving onward and upward, and we wouldn't have pictures in the newspaper, and we wouldn't be wasting our time with this crap again, and we wouldn't be having a, a bunch of people running around here psychotic like we are today. It, it, it is incredibly embarrassing, but anyway, I just wanted to let you know 
that uh, I like your show. I don't call often. I called uh, last week also and spoke to you, but uh, best wishes, and I hope those people get their their heads out of their asses and see the light. And happy circus. Thank you. Okay. So I guess not. Q-Q-A-M, go f*** yourself. I wouldn't vote for you No matter what you do I don't care how hard you try All you guys do is cheat and lie I'm so tired of RVP And I think that path you can in so creepy Bradley is the next jock And Ford is just a joke And George W. Bush Oh, sent the 80 snorting coat I wouldn't vote for you No matter what you do I don't care how hard you try All you guys do is cheat and lie Number 15, Jesse the body for president, baby. Let's have the election tomorrow. Let's have it over the weekend. I'll go 10 or 20 times. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Hank Goldberg show with two featuring Jimmy. We could be special Johnson at five. Talking baseball with Fat Josh Friedman at uh, six o'clock because I guess Donnie B's a little bit surly today. And then the Marlins at Atlanta to play the Braves seven oh five oh the last weekend of Marlins baseball. Oh. Let's hear it. Here's Coral Springs. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes sir. You gotta love that Jesse Ventura. When was the last time you heard a politician? Uh, never, uh, never. Slam religion. Never. It's like a sacred cow. Right. It's unbelievable. Anyway, yeah, you gotta love Jesse. He scared me a little bit at the beginning because you know a wrestler and Jesus, you know. Mm-hmm. But he really seems to care for the country and what he's doing. He seems to be up front. And he's got he he's got a brain. He's got he makes sense. Everything he says I'm makes sense. You. I'm Every issue you. he deals with, he deals with like a mensch, like a like a person who's thinking it out, as opposed to somebody who's just pandering. Right, right. And if he runs for president, I'm voting for him. Absolutely. Oh, anyway, God. Anyway, that's not why I called. I called because I want you to join my new organization. As, yeah. I, entered my, as I entered my 40s, I, you know, I'm a very slow learner, but I finally realized the, the number one truth of the, of the world, and that is that everybody's an asshole but us. Right, but you and me. That's it. And I don't know how we got to be so today. lucky, but, you know. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the good news. Thanks for the uh, vote of confidence. And it's been nice talking to you, sir, but obviously because our management are a bunch of bozos, we won't be talking to any of you anymore. Nice timing, too, by the way, Greg. Excellent timing. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Boca. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Nice much, sir. Okay. Now, you're going to have to hear a few oys when I tell you about what happened this morning. I'm calling for you to cheer me up. I, right now, I'm sitting with an ice pack on my cojones because I had my vasectomy this morning. Yeah. So can you cheer me up with a couple of requests? No. You don't need the cheering up, pal. I'm the one who needs the cheering up, and I'm sitting here dying again this morning. Believe me, just dying with this crowd. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Good. Well, get on to something good. We've got hockey starts tomorrow night. Yeah. And uh, hopefully looking forward to maybe a 2-2 tie, go to overtime and see some 4 and 4 play. Uh-huh. You're going to be at the game? I'll be there. What section are you? 106. Ah, I'm 105. Get season tickets there. I'll, I'll wave to you. I hope you will. I'll wave back. Bring your cell phone. <laughs> Have a good one. Okay, see ya. We'll just stand up in front of everybody else and talk on a cell phone in the middle of the game. 1,600 open lines here today. Nothing moves these bastards like I told you before. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Hialeah. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you, man? Okay. Listen, uh, a quick question about your CD. Mm-hmm. Is that available at all specs or? All over, yeah, all over Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach. Oh, okay, because I, ju- I went to two in Hialeah and I can't find it anywhere, man. Not yet. Not yet. It'll be there uh, this weekend. Oh, all right. Hey, go OJ, man. For mayor. Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Ha ha ha. Five six seven oh five sixty. Another dumb little spick. Like I said, you know, earlier in the week, and I, if I had the if I had the uh, you know strength to do it today, I would. I'd just sit here and talk for four hours, or at least most of it, like I did for three days. Ain't gonna happen today, sweetheart. Music. Let that music play, baby. Because they just they tear out your kishkis and then they tear the innards of your mind. Whatever kind of, kind of mental preparedness you had to come in here and do a radio show. By the time it gets to be ten o'clock, you're ready to walk out of here screaming and yelling and yeah. like that every goddamn day lately. Maybe they're just coming unglued. Maybe they just can't handle the pressure. That might be it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. We're waiting for your stuff here today, folks. We're waiting desperately. Are we getting it? No. What we're getting are morons like that little spick from Hialeah just there thinks he's a sit-down comedian, the Howard-loving guy that called before making guttural sounds, the usual bunch of schweinerei that we get from the South Florida audience, who got nothing thoughtful to say, and basically had very little thoughtful to say yesterday when I'm sitting here screaming and puking my guts out on behalf of the kids of this goddamn town who have nobody who cares about them, the kids that go to school who have no textbooks, the kids that go to school in school buses with Aunt Jemima driving who I can't drive her finger up her ass, the kids that go to school I can't get a uh, lunch break. Nobody cares, baby, because this is a real special place. This is La La Land. If you ever hear anybody use that expression, La La Land, just look around you and you'll know you're in it. You'll be here. Nothing moves them. Other than free crap, nothing moves them at all. Here's a lady mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Is this Neil? Sounds like me. Oh, not on the telephone. Well, sounds like somebody who uh, is pretending to be me. Okay. Um, I was listening to you yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to call, and I'm a Day County teacher. Right. So um, I just wanted to tell you that they're always bragging about being the largest school system, and that's why they're so crummy, Mm -hmm. because they are so big. And we don't have enough schools, and we don't have enough uh, anything. But that's not it. There's no control. There's too many schools for a little school to, you know, for 12 board members to, you know, control. It just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they act like kings and queens because when they come to an event, there's a certain order that you have to address them and they have to be addressed in a certain way and they have to be kowtowed to. Who are you talking about, the school board members? The school board members. Uh I mean, the whole way, it's, it's just ridiculous. Bay County needs to make our school system smaller so that the people we elect are more like... Well, how do you, how do you make the school system smaller? Do you send all the kids off to private school? Is that it? No, no. You take the county and you divide it up into six or seven school districts mm-hmm. as opposed to one large county system. When you grew That's up... That's yeah. When you went to school, you didn't have huge school districts. Right. The people in your neighborhood were the people who um, who you voted for. So... If we can ever get smaller school districts and, you know, get rid of the but, county. But in the meantime, that, uh, that doesn't answer the revenue questions. Where does the money come from to feed these kids and to get the textbooks for the kids who can't take any homework home because they have no textbooks? Where does the money come from? There have got to be people screaming and yelling for additional tax dollars for education, not to build stadiums and crap like that. There's plenty of money. It's spent very poorly. It's all really? given to the principals, and mm-hmm. the principals have total discretion on what they buy. Some buy AIDS, some have their friends work there, some buy um, all extraneous things to make their school look good, but that may be decorative in nature, but aren't related to teaching. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's in the wrong hands. So there's plenty of money. I think so. I just think it's squandered. And I think if they ever did an audit, speaking about audits, mm-hmm. School board members, you find out that their pockets are lined pretty well, too. Mm -hmm. There's all the books that they buy. They buy at top dollar, and kickbacks go someplace, and they buy new programs every three years and throw out the old ones. They don't need to spend the money like they do. It's going someplace. But nobody in this town ever looks into that 
tax dollars and where it goes. Because nobody and how cares about done. it. Nobody cares about education here. It's a uh, it's a foreign topic. Nobody cares. Well, I I think somebody should care, and I think it should herald the Herald or the Sun Sentinel or somebody. No, no, the Herald, a, the Herald and the Sun Sentinel are too busy trying to get us to spend more public money so we can build a stadium for millionaires. Well, I agree, but I'm sorry to say it's a sad state. The parents don't care because the parents aren't educated enough to even know. Okay, good luck, sweetheart. Hang in there. Bye. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Miami Lakes. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. How are you doing, Neil? Okay. Two things. Three things fast. First of all, I tried the Nick's cigar Splendido. I met him at the uh, uh, Lake at uh, the uh, Shula State Town, that famous fight the other day. But the main thing that I want to talk to you about: What do you think of this trade of Lindsay and Simpson? I think it's much ado about nothing. That's what I think. It's just a matter of just changing, taking that guy that uh, he wasn't that great, but I mean... I mean, Lindsey, well, you know, first of all, Lindsey was a forward and Simpson's a defenseman, mm-hmm. but the fact is we got too many defensemen number one. Right, and right. As far That's as what toughness I was concerned, Lindsey wasn't a big guy, but he was as hard-nosed and played yes. as tough as anybody uh, that we've ever had on the so team. How can we so how so have a coach... To, to me, this, again, is just spinning their wheels, desperately trying to get somebody on there saying, oh, right. look, we're trying to get somebody to protect Pavel Bure, and we're trying to get somebody on the blue line. Count Simpson's not the kind of defenseman they needed anyway. They right. needed somebody who's off Defensive defenseman, which right. he is not. You're right. You're right. And this man this morning, Terry Murray, whatever his name is, the coach who was defending that other guy Simpson, that this or that was a perfect trade. Well, I don't, I don't understand this guy. He's a piece of crap. I, I just think that, thank God, at least we have Pavel Bury, and uh, we just hope that that. that and and let's just hope he's not as fragile as they're acting like he is, because if he is, it's going to be a real long year with him sitting uh, on the stand. Did you see somewhere. the blow that this guy gave him the other day? Yeah, Chris Wells. It's Jesus the first hit he's ever Christ. given. Yeah. That guy's a big guy. Mm-hmm. He almost killed him. But anyway, he was he survived the whole thing. But anyway, uh, I really appreciate uh, talking with you and telling you this. This lady that called before, she's right. Uh, where, what about the money of the lottery? Where did that go? Where is it? Probably in somebody's pocket. Maybe probably the same place as the money I from our golf tournament. The lottery money was going to help the school system. Yeah, in every way. A little bit of it. It's Have you noticed it's that superintendent down. with that dyed black hair? Have you seen him? He yeah, has with a little with mustache. A okay, yeah, like you said. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty <laughs> on the AT and T F and line. That's what he said. Nice going there, sir. Henry F. Twenty six after <laughs> eleven at QAM. That is great radio. Hello, I'm George W. Bush Jr., your next president, like it or not, and I'm here to talk to you about headache relief. If you live in the South and suffer from occasional headaches, why, I recommend Bush Cocaine Powder for relief. That's Bay Say for short. <laughs> you know, I'm so stinking rich that a headache's about all I can relate to when it comes to little voters like you. And I don't mind telling you that you'll contribute to my soft money campaign war chest with every package of Bush Cocaine Powder you buy. Bush Cocaine Powder is not recommended for use by Jews. It's 11.32 at 5.60 WQM. How's it by Jew? Uh, we got a couple open lines, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Oh, listen, I don't want to start, uh, you know, harping on the school education thing anymore, but my brother happens to be a principal in Dade County. Uh-huh. It's pretty sad when I see him have to go to uh, Office Depot and Office Max to buy supplies that aren't being provided. So, you know, it's not a situation like the principal has got all this money in the world. Plus, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you know, that you teacher know. That, that called and said that there's uh, more than enough money, I, I'm not buying that for a second. Well, no Neil, way. Neil, let me tell you something. I, I mean, think there's enough there's money. there's graft and everywhere, but there's not enough money. There's, there's no way that their kids go without textbooks if there's enough money. No, but, but you know, the, the problem is I pay all this taxes for school and education and everything, and you know what? My kids go to private school, so what do they do with my money? I'm having to pay twice. So you, I think there is enough money there. They don't need, they've got money for kids that don't even go to school. So what are they doing with that money? I think it's a misappropriation or lack of intelligence, maybe, on the part of those folks. Maybe OJ's got it. Okay. Okay, just keep that in mind, folks. There's plenty of money to go around. Just keep that in mind. No problem. That's a real good excuse. Next time they uh, you know, have some kind of a vote on uh, money for education, which they always vote against that down here anyway, just say no and have a clear conscience about it because there's certainly plenty of money to go around. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. See, this is always the, this is what amazes me, and it's just a, such a cover up for people that don't really give a crap about kids' education. And his kids, his kids are going to private school anyway. So what the hell does he care about the public schools? 
It's such a great, convenient rationalization to make you feel better about yourself, the fact that you don't care about the quality of education. It's just very sad. I saw that yesterday. I saw your tremendous, your dynamic response. And then you see the kids on there on the news last night. Well, you know, we're just going to have to skip lunch because uh, there still isn't enough food and they're still at a long line. And so uh, now that we're stuck here as prisoners, we'll just have to skip lunch altogether. How about just skipping all the meals every day? Just go home and have dinner. Here's Deerfield Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. Uh, two things. One, let me ask you a question. Why would the Murray boys advertise that Pavel Because they're dumb. Because they're very dumb. Well, maybe we'll put them on forwards where Billy Lindsay was. The second thing, I got a good Bell South Mobility story for you. I went and uh, had my contract to be renewed, so I called them up and I said, well, AT&T is offering all this great stuff and I'd like to switch them. It's like, mm-hmm. what can you do for me as an existing customer? Mm-hmm. They said, we don't care about our existing customers. Only new customers get the deals, the one penny phones or whatever. Oh, we don't care about our existing customers. Right. That's Florida for you, isn't uh-huh. it? That's beautiful. Nice way to do business. Good luck to us. Right. Have a great day. Thanks Neil. for the good news. Thanks. Kind of like us here at QAM. We don't care about anybody. Fine, just keep breaking in that money. Like the sign on the wall behind me says, just give us the effing money, thank you. We've had that sign up there for almost two years, and boy, never were true words spoken. Right, Luann? 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. You see, the audience doesn't seem to, I mean, I realize it's a week old. It's an old thing now. But it's following us around. It's causing a lot of internal and uh, all, you know, it's like a goddamn tidal wave of psychosis. But the audience don't seem to give a crap about the OJ thing. They couldn't care less. I do care because it makes me look stupid. It makes the people at Center One look stupid. There's a guy over there at Lago Mar who's about to lose his job because of it. But these people don't care about that. Here's a lady in North Miami. Hello. Morning, Neil. Yes, ma'am. This is your Argentinian Jew. Uh huh. It's my birthday today. Uh, yeah. So chronic. Oh. So I just, chronic. Thank you. I just want to talk to you about the schools. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm lucky where I live. My kids go to uh, Highland Oaks Middle School. To what? Highland Oaks Middle Highland School. Highland Oaks, yeah. And they have books coming home with them and at school, mm-hmm. and they never miss a lunch, um, and they serve whatever they're supposed to serve. Yeah. Well, it's the luck of the draw. I mean, if your kids happen to go to just the right school, and you, like you said, you'll be lucky, and if not, then you're screwed. They're Absolutely. Screwed. That's just, you know, I know that all the other schools are, you know, are that way, but wherever credit is due, I would like to do that. Okay. Okay? Thanks. And have a nice weekend. Have a happy. Bye-bye. And happy circus. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Like I said the other day, where's the mayor? Where's Mr. Mayor? That's got this seminar there about the children and about the future of the children and the year two thousand and yada, all this other bullcrap, all this political uh, grandstanding. Where is he about the Channel Four story? No room at the lunchroom. Where is he? Huh? He ought to be driving around a goddamn milk wagon, serving up, uh, throwing out sandwiches. I'm sure Mickey Harrison could afford to uh, provide some lunches for those kids, huh? Set up uh, some. Some, in fact, he'd probably like to make a profit, too, huh? Set up a little concession there in front of all those schools where the kids can't get lunch every day. Let's just give him the franchise. He can go into food business. I'm sure he's going to serve some crap food there at the American Airlines goddamn arena. And by the way, isn't it very appropriate that it's being called the American Airlines arena? Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, how you doing? Okay. Doing pretty good. I, I agree with you uh, that the kids don't get enough money for the schools. But uh, I also agree that they're not spending it wisely. I mean, I'm a kid myself, and I can see that uh, high schools don't get enough money. Yeah. But uh, I like that lady said, like the kids get two sets of books: one to get, and one to take home, and one to stay at school. I mean, I went to a private school all my life, and we only got one set of one set of books. You kids know? get two sets of books. The kids get two sets of books. A, a lot of my friends that go to pri- uh, public school. They get two sets of books. They get one to take home and one to stay in school. Sounds like us here at QAM. That's what we do in bookkeeping. We keep two sets of books. I mean, I mean that's ridiculous. And then also, like my brother's a teacher, and they have they have kids that you know their parents don't they don't want to take them to school, you know, and they don't care about their kids. Yeah. And then you know they they get their kids picked up by some bus, and then they need some special assistance to make sure the kid gets on the bus and he doesn't run away or something, you know. And that's just extra money. I mean, if the kid wants to go to school, he'll go to school. And if he doesn't, you know, the hell with him, dude. You know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that we should spend, we should spend all this money for no reason. You know, I, I mean, I agree taking the kid, the, the kid to school on a bus. Well, what, but, what do you, what do you think about kids that aren't getting lunch because there's no food for them at lunch in some of the bigger schools? What's, what about that? 
I, I, I really hate that. Like stupid crap, yeah, okay. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the eighth. Well, that's the way people talk. I hate to break the news. The word police at the FCC up there. Okay, that's the way real people talk. It's almost the year two thousand, and they do say sh all the time. But oh, God forbid, we should let let that on the air. That's evil. That's bad. It's okay that there's all the graft and all the robbery of goddamn public funds all over the goddamn place and the fact that there's kids can't get a lunch at school every day who people are paying taxes to make sure that they do get fed, which they have to pay for it anyway if they can afford to do so. But nevertheless, but God forbid that I have to cut this kid off because he says SH on the ear. Oh, do we need Jesse Ventura? If ever a man was right for a country, if ever there was a time when this man was needed, it's right now. Not in four years, not in eight years, not ten years from Sukkot, but right now. But, of course, you know, like I said at the beginning of the show today, you know he just uh, sealed his own coffin with 700 big nails by making, you know, very honest and very accurate observations about organized religion. Uh, you can forget about him now as we speak. Eric is uh, attaching a link to our website where people can email him through our website and uh, show yeah. support for what it's worth. Can email Jesse the body? Yes. Oh, also, by the right way, on. you can also uh, buy, uh, order your uh, Center One, your Best of Neil CDs on there, uh, neilrogers.com. It's on there. 20 before noon at 560 WQAM, your hopeless station for the 90s. This is 560 QAM. This station stands for nothing. That's my opinion. I'm Mike Disney. All right. Tell me that you love my eyes. Oh! I know that you keep on checking up my eyes. Don't blame you because I'm very cute. How young is too young? Check out my breath. They're poking my muscles and ears. All right. Squirt, squirt. at 560 WQM. Yeah, we got the word police, baby. I wish the audience could see that 8 million page response that our attorneys had to send to the FCC for that pending alleged $35,000 fine for indecent broadcasts on this show last year. I wish you could take a look at it. How juvenile, how ridiculous it is that we have a bunch of adults sitting up there in Washington looking at wrecked them, hell it damn near killed them, and they're spelling stuff wrong, and they got the bleeps missing in somewhere. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Sitting around, the censorship people. Protecting our children. The same kids who can't get fed lunch at school, by the way, but we gotta protect them from words that they use every day themselves. You're a bunch of crazy people. That's the problem with our government, man. It's run by mostly crazy people. And in the meantime, the rest of the people are going around, yeah. oh yeah, let's get that stadium built so we can have a goddamn ball club. <laughs> I mean, the real tip-off to me was, what, what day was it? I gave those hockey tickets away. Was it, uh, whatever day it was, a couple of days ago? For opening night tomorrow night in the front row, $105 a piece, $210 worth of tickets for opening night. And I'm, I'm asking, because I just don't want to give them away, make it a little bit tough, asking, identify some players, okay, just to show me, you know, a little bit about the sport, a little bit. 
Steve Eiserman, Matt Sundin, Doug Gilmore, so, you know, it's Timo Solani. What number do they wear, you know? Oh, 110, 28? Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be a whole bunch of people there tomorrow night wondering, hey, where's the big Schwarzer tonight? He's out for five or six weeks. Oh, gee, we don't want to see that. <laughs> we want to see him hit somebody. Come on, Warhol, hit somebody. They not only don't have any idea who he is, they can't even pronounce his name. I have no idea why they show up. I None. Zero. Here's P. Ryan. Hello. Hey, man. How you doing, man? All right. Pissed off this morning, man. I got a real serious Pissed beef. Pissed off and fired up. Okay. I got a real serious beef this morning. Shoot. Listen, how can, answer this question for me. How can you have, how can you have people that don't speak English yeah. working in a place like this? I'm, 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 I'm extremely late for my flight, man. Right. So I'm rushing through the, you know, the scanners where they, uh, I guess be looking for dope or whatever they're right. looking for. Uh -huh. so, well, no, they're looking for hand grenades. Okay, so I'm going through the simultaneously with like four other people, right? Right. The lady who, who's taking care of me, she don't speak a lick of English. Ay, 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 she don't right. speak now a bit of English. So right. I actually go through it and with, other, with four other people, and I guess my alarm went off, so I'm running trying to get to my flight. Right. She's telling me to stop in Spanish. Now, this is America. I don't speak Spanish. Right. So I'm running trying to get to my plane. She running behind me speaking Spanish. I don't know who she's talking no, to. No, you're supposed to turn around and go, no pick it up on you, no pick it up on you. So hold on, man. Customs, I mean, all these federal agents come tackle me down like I'm running through, you know what I'm saying? Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Federal agents came and tackled you like you were O.J. running to the Hertz counter? Tackled me like, I had, like I'm trying to get through that with a bomb or oh, a kilo God. of cocaine or whatever. I need to complain, man. These Cubans need to get back on these A-Rabs and get back across the Amen. border. Amen. F and A, get with the program, get with the English, or get lost. Hey man, and I appreciate it, man. But I'm, 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 I'm do something to these Cubans, man. I'm serious, man. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Okay, George says he's just a little guy. All right. Okay. He had nothing to do with that. Just turn around and yell, "No picking a pony, no picking a pony," and just keep running. She should have said, "Hold it." Yeah. Oh, he's right, man. There's there, those banana boat people I got at the airport. And you wonder why the list of all those people with their hand grenades and their cocaine and the heroin and all that stuff, you wonder why 99 and two-thirds percent of them were no picket of uh, English. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Dade County is lost. We've declared that so many times, but it's always worth saying again. Dade County is lost. Here's Pompano. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just uh, wanting to say something on the schools. Um, I, I've dated um, a teacher, and um, the private schools actually pay less to the teachers than the public schools. Mm -hmm. And so that sort of bewilders me as far as why the private schools are so much better if the teachers aren't being paid as much. Maybe the fact that they don't have 30 and 40 kids in a classroom it might, might have something to do with it? Well, I mean, wouldn't the teachers have a, you know, more motivation if they're getting paid more? Well, you would think so, yeah. But, I don't know. As far as OJ is concerned, I... And in addition to which, don't you think that the parents who have enough money and care enough to spend money to send their kids to private schools, that the kids are more highly motivated to learn? No, no. No? I know. Because uh, I, I went to a public school and I had some friends who went to a private school. Yeah. And, you know, the kids with the private schools have a lot of extra cash and... They, you know, they're just able to goof off more, buy more drugs, or do whatever they mm -hmm. want. So I don't think that really has, you know, a big, big difference as far as... So maybe let's cut the pay of the teachers. That'll solve the problem. That, yeah, yeah, I just think getting different teachers may, may solve the problem. I don't think they really screen the teachers well, or, the, you know, the, the management at the public schools don't really care as much. I think it would probably be good if the teachers could, like, speak English properly. That would be good. I remember having a Spanish And, like, maybe teacher. not having to be able to... I'm not just talking about Spanish. I'm talking about people who speak bubonics and, you know, all kinds of people <laughs> who really can't speak English. Right. Find an X for their name. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, I just want to also thank you for getting rid of that douchebag deal. That, that was getting a little oh, out of hand. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time had, had run. It was, yeah, it, it was time. Okay, pal. See all right, you. have a good one. Bye. Five, six, seven. So we're going to cut the uh, salaries of teachers in the public school system, and that'll uh, yeah, that'll tighten things up a little bit. And maybe we can use the money that we save so we can buy some lunch for these kids. No room at the lunchroom. These are things that I never heard of before in my lifetime. In my life, in the six hundred years I've been alive, things I never heard of before. Only here in Florida. 
where everybody's got all of this money, and of course it's all going for graft, like the $29 million. I wonder how many lunches that would buy, the $29 million they spent for the project at Miami International that they had to scrap because, well, we had to change our plan, and the $29 million went <laughs> down the toilet. And the money, the 440000 they spent to bring the Pan American Games here, and then we had to send them someplace else because they were going to have Cuba participate, and we said, oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> Because all the local politicians, including that gringo, that, that cracker, Merritt Steerheim, were pandering to the old Cubans. Oh, yeah, we got to say goodbye to the Pan, Pan Am Games. So that was like flushing money down the toilet. It's just amazing. And then, by the way, and I never saw anything on the local news this morning. Governor Booch, he was supposed to, uh, you know, by midnight last night, 11.59 p.m., he was going to, like, take over the city of Miami because Carroyo, he vetoed the budget because he was pandering to the senior citizens there with this thing he's trying to get through. I'm lowering the senior citizen taxes. So they finally came up with a goddamn budget for the city of Miami, and he vetoes it. And the governor says if they didn't have a plan in place by midnight last night, he's taken over, and within a week they may suspend all the services in the city of Miami. But there's no problem. Let's build a goddamn stadium. Oh, yeah. Let's build a freaking stadium for John Henry in a city where the state is about ready to take over the goddamn city again. Because we can't figure out where the next dime is going to come from. Like I said, crazy people. Let's build a stadium. And the best they can do is argue about, well, you know, it's too congested over here. Yeah, well, that's got nothing to do with it. The fact is, if he wants to build a goddamn stadium, let him pay his own goddamn money out. He just gave a million dollars charity away this morning and got his big ugly puss in the paper there. I'll say it again. Any person who we're gonna butterfly net for anybody that wants to give their tax money to this nut. I must be crazy. I must. Be oh crazy. my God! This he needs to be in a rubber room somewhere. We need to be protected from this guy. In fact, where's that letter to the editor? This this is great. Bruce Montecalvo in Fort Lauderdale says Fort Lauderdale has rushed to pass laws that stop the feeding of homeless people on public beaches. Our community, so offended by these types of beggars, demanded and quickly got laws to protect us from them, and not a moment too soon. Why then, when confronted by Marlins owner John Henry asking for money to build a state-of-the-art stadium playground, are we left to face this beggar without protection? Shouldn't there be a law? Maybe we are to regard his scheme to use other people's money whenever possible as a demonstration of his innate sense of smart business strategy. No, I think you're right, Bruce. We ought to pass a law because he's publicly begging. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. For our goddamn money. But, of course, just say, no. Works like like a charm. I think it's time I set the record straight about my friend George Bush. Some people seem their noses out of joint. Yeah. He did drugs back then, so what's the point? Because as a candidate, George Bush is fine. So what if he started a line? Well, he's the best damn candidate I've seen. <laughs> I don't care if he pops in fed of me. President Clinton was a ticking mine. So here's to push. He did a line. I guess I just don't understand what the big deal is. We've had many presidents in the office. Who's done one thing or another? Like Gerald Ford, for instance. Obviously, he was on something. Otherwise, why was he falling down all the time? And take Jimmy Carter, for example. Well, I thought he was so hopped up on skunk legal, he didn't even know there were hostages for the first eight months. Why, well, even way back to Washington. I do believe the only reason he chopped down the cherry tree was because he had the munchies. Like outrageous. From noon at 560 WQM, we got the Hank Goldberg show at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon with the Jimmy We Could Be Really Special show at uh, 5 o'clock. And then we got Talking Baseball with Big Fat Smelly Josh Friedman at 6. 7 o'clock, the Marlins at the Braves as we begin the last season, the last series of the season for the Marlins. Oh! Let me say it again. I saw it on the CBC last night, a lengthy report on the Montreal Expos, who had a grotesque year, although they will finish ahead of the Marlins, but nevertheless, and averaged 9,000 people a game is all they averaged in attendance. And they still said, well, you know, we're going to save the franchise and we'll be back next year. And the reason we can say that with confidence is we didn't lose any money. How about that, John Henry? I mean, it was a rough year at the gate for the Marlins, but they sure as hell uh, averaged a lot more than 9,000 people a game attendance, at least in tickets sold. 
And yet all we ever hear is they're always doing a duff. Wah, wah. Yeah, they're always doing that duff or escorting a few here, escorting a few there. We're supposed to feel so sorry for them because they just can't make it in that facility. There's not a goddamn thing wrong with that stadium. So it rains. You know something? Big stinking deal. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless. Rained in the first year, too, and you know something? They drew over 3 million people the first season in spite of the rain. Same weather, same location, same parking. And guess what? Oh, and by the way, oh, that's another thing I should tell you. You know this business with Dave O'Brien and John, uh, uh, John uh, what the hell's his name? Joe uh, Angel? I'm getting so tongue-tied I can't even think of his goddamn name. Joe Angel and Dave O'Brien and the way it was handled so poorly that they let it out before the season was over so that uh, they're not speaking to each other, even looking at each other, and there's that tremendous hostility there. Guess who pulled this off, by the way? Let me give you one clue. I must be crazy. I must be nuts. Yeah. And also, he's the one that went to Barry Jackass and uh, gave him the story. How do you like that? To piss off a guy like Joe Angel, who did a good, solid job for uh, however many years, what was it, seven, eight years that they've been in existence now? And instead of waiting until the season was over, which was just, you know, a few weeks after the announcement was blurted all out to the media and creating all this hard feeling. You're an asshole, John Henry. That's exactly what you are. You are a little BDI twerpy asshole who got lucky planned the commodities market and made a lot of money. That's your only claim to fame. Other than that, you're a zero. You're nothing. You know nothing about public relations, just like your predecessor with that organization. And you think that because your stuff don't stink and because you're giving money away and because you're sucking around with some of the people in the media, you got an in with the Herald and the Sun Sentinel, you think you can pull one over on the public here and we're going to dig deep into our pockets and just hand you over a bunch of money so we can build you a goddamn fancy play toy. Well, guess what, John Henry? The answer is still. No. How do you like that? Maybe he can run a few golf tournaments, you know? If he can scam as much money on a golf tournament as somebody did on the one that we had here a week ago, maybe he can wind up with millions and millions. I don't know. Would you like to find out where that other 23 grand went to? And somebody sure as hell owes an apology to that guy out there at Lago Mar whose job is on the line, who had nothing to do with this, by the way, who they're ready to can because uh, they didn't want any part of O.J. I know that comes as a great shock to some of the assholes in this building, the O.J. sickness people, the four or five O.J. liquors we got. I don't want to mention Phyllis and Roy and Sue Ann and, and uh, Sam by name. Might come as a great surprise to them, but there's a whole lot of people beside Neil Rogers who don't want to be associated in any way, or shape, or form with the murderer. What a shock. Here's the keys. Hello. Oh, dear. Now I'm going to have to bail. I've uh, lost my little brain, lost the point I was going to make. This isn't totally relevant, but it's not uh, unrelated. Okay. One of the things that uh, has always confounded me and irritated the crap out of me are people that uh, walk around for 18 or 20 years and uh, think it's a pretty good place, and then all of a sudden they have kids, and it becomes a real evil, uh, wretched place. And uh, I think maybe more to the point, they should kind of think it through before they decide to have their little darlings. Right. Amen. Maybe, maybe it'd be a good, <laughs> maybe it'd be a good idea instead of uh, trying to change the world after you squirt out your little brat to uh, get your Kid ready for the world mm -hmm. because it's kind of always been this way. And yeah. I don't know. I, maybe I, I guess that sounds cruel and hard. No, no, you're, you're right. You're right. We have a lot of you're children making children today, and they haven't got the foggiest idea or uh, any clues to how to be a responsible parent. You're right. I mean, I love your idea of forced sterilization. I've been kind of uh, aligning to that my, myself for years, but. Uh, it's, it's kind of a taboo subject. You dare some to... Uh, oh, yeah, that. because, of course, it gets into racism and all of this other elitism and the things like that. But the fact is it's called survival. That's the only way to make it. That's quality, right. of, quality of life. Quality of life. Oh, that's one of those commie pinko lines. You know, they get, the uh, right-wingers get real nervous when they hear somebody say that. Uh, what time is your uh, little thing tomorrow? I'd, I'd like to drive up and see you. Noon to two, Sawgrass Mills Mall. Uh, I'll try to make it. Okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, I haven't heard in a long time, and I and I detest making a request, but uh, was um, a Sling Blade Sings Sting. Okay. Do you still have that? Sure, you, you got it. Thank you. See ya. Oh, I shouldn't have said you got it unless it's in there. Oh, boy, don't ever say you got it unless you know that it's in there. I bet it's not in there. Is it? What is it? Sling Blade Sings Sting? Sting Blade? Oh, is that what it, <laughs> is that what it's called? Yeah, there it is. It's in there. Thank God. I hate promising. Oh yeah, no problem. And then it's not in there. And then they say, Oh, that asshole. He promised me. Well, it's in there. We got it. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. 
Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hi, Noon. Uh, love the show. Uh, I have a friend of mine. He really enjoys uh, baseball, which I don't, especially the mornings. Uh-huh. And he's always telling me uh, and about we like always argue about the stadium. And he says, oh, it needs to be done because it's a business and uh, this will bring money for the franchise. And I'm like, no, it well, won't. Well, what does that mean? It's a business that will bring money for the franchise. Yeah, because the they... public doesn't start a business for somebody else. If you're in business, you put up the money to start your own business. Right. And and he says, oh, because now the money that the, the consensus fans, the money, the, the hot dogs and everything goes for the Dolphins. It doesn't go for the Marlins. And I say, well, you know, the Dolphins at least make it to the playoff every once in a while. And uh, I don't know what they did with the team just breaking yeah. off the team like well, that. Tell them the biggest hot dog with the Marlins is the owner, okay, sir? That will solve the problem. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. As we keep rolling along, singing a song, a few sour notes along the way. Here's a mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. Thank God for Jesse Ventura. If right. He cares, if he I, cares. I, you know something? How come I'm not getting a whole bunch of calls about that? Here's a guy who's the governor of Minnesota, who some people think ought to be the president, and he says uh, it publicly, and again, he, he uh, refuses to uh, retract his comments today, thank God. Organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak-minded people who need strength in numbers and an excuse uh, to get people to stick their nose in other people's business. A great well, line, of- and then nobody's got anything to say about it here today. I don't get it. Instead of being president, why don't we have him be emperor and then he right. can do away with the Senate? I agree. How's that? Listen, Sounds here's, the, here's the real reason I called. I was in a situation the other night. I laughed so hard and I said, I got a call. I was in a situation with some Cubans who are third generation, really good friends of mine, Americanized right. as you can get. We were with her parents walking around and these other Cubans were going by speaking Russian because I guess they had come over later on. The mother turned to us and said, I can't stand it when they speak Russian because they try to not let me know what they're saying. No, exactly. They're talking to But God forbid it, they spoke Spanish to me. Right. I love it. It was perfect. I laughed so hard. I said, oh, hypocrite, hypocrite, hypocrite. Beautiful. Hey, take care. Have a good day. Panamachi Peruski. Thanks. Okay. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the 18th. I hate when those goddamn uh, Martians speak Martian behind my back, you know what? Because I know they're always talking about me. It's 1208 at 560 WQAM. How about that fat boy, by the way? This is 560 QAM. Put the stick your spoon in it, lad. Don't worry, it's not going to break. Now, from KTL Records, comes a new recording. So unbelievable. It's a must for all collectors. You love Billy Bob Thornton in his Academy Award winning film, Sling Blade. Now hear him sing the best of the police as Sling Blade. Mm-hmm. Don't thank my own can. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Work your heart to find mm-hmm. Breaking New, new, new Da, da, da All I want to say to you I reckon Da, da, da You also get Go, go, Dan Go, Dan So close to me And who can forget the police classic? Well, Sam, you don't have to turn on the red light. Don't days are over. You don't have to tell your body to the night. Reckon, break to begin without you. Break to begin without you. Break to begin without you. You're not using language like that. Mm-hmm. And if you order now, you get mm-hmm. Stingblade Storytellers. Mm-hmm. When I wrote this song, mm-hmm. I was in the nervous house, mm-hmm. looking out the window, mm-hmm. hoping I would get out someday. Mm-hmm. If you love somebody, mm-hmm. if you want me to kill someone for you, mm-hmm. definitely free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a low more blade. Yes, so, if you like the way he talks, and I like the way you talk, then you've got to have Billy Bob Thornton as yes, sing blade. Order now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's uh, 12 minutes afternoon, 560 WQM, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Miami Beach. Hello. It's, uh, 12 minutes afternoon, Miami Beach, with the phone up in the back. Here's a mobile in Coral Springs. Hello. Uh, pig report in Coconut Creek. Yeah. Uh, by Black, uh, Black Road and Coles Road. Yeah. 
uh, two motorcycle police officers pulling over people left and right. Uh, question, Neil, uh, with regard to government intervention into people's affairs, why don't the people speak up for themselves and tell John Henry to take a hike? Well, what, what does that mean? Well, the people, why, what, why don't what we are they going to do? Go out in the street and, uh, and with a No, microphone? why don't we just, why don't we just petition John Henry? Well, you know, there's nothing to petition when, if it's on a ballot next year, which is what he says it is, you go to the ballot and you vote no. like they did on the penny sales tax, and that takes care of that. That's the way you tell them to take a hike. Exactly, but the point is, I'm saying before he even establishes the referendum, why don't we let, petition? Let me see. And how do you do that? With a petition for what? Petition to not have. They've the already people. told him to take a hike. They're not going to support his ball club, sir. Okay, you're talking crap. You're talking caca. You're talking nonsense. You're talking pure on a double-rated crap. When it gets on a ballot, like I said, but don't confuse this guy. Yeah, why don't we go out there and say, "Hey, take a hike, John Henry." Okay, take a hike, John Henry. You hear it? Look at that board, man. Five six seven oh five sixty. Tom, before the uh, commercial break, by the way, there was every line was lit. Now there is one. Huh? For a two minute commercial break. Right, for a two minute well, how do they know that? This station's conditioned them for like ten and twelve and thirteen minute commercial breaks. They're killing me, I'll tell you that right now. Killing me. They're destroying they're just breaking my back, this place. Tearing my kishkis out. Because they haven't got the foggiest idea of what this show is all about, how it operates. All they know is how many spots can we stick in there? How many spots can screw and stick in there? How much business can we rifle through there? So maybe we can continue with this masquerade and this charade and continue paying John Henry and Wayne Hyping all this money so Greg can have his ball games. And let me say it again. How many of you would like to have the money in the bank right now that this station lost on the Marlins these last two years? Lost our ass. Big time. Here's West Palm Beach. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I, I went to lunch. So I don't know if you already talked about this, but uh, I was reading in the Palm Beach Post up here how uh, um, John Henry's uh, uh, lobbyists quit over conflict of interest because they also represent Hyzinga. Yeah. So Henry had uh, mentioned... Well, how do you separate the two? Those two are also joined at the hip. Oh, they're, they're both hypocritical. Henry had mentioned uh, in his proposal that he wanted to tax rental cars. To help pay for the state, and well, obviously that hurt Hyzinga, so now mm -hmm. there's a big problem. These guys are willing to tax anybody in the world as long as it doesn't affect them. Right, and as long as the money goes in their pocket. Right, talk about hypocrites. We don't, we haven't got the wherewithal to take any tax money here in South Florida. There are too many other desperate needs, especially in Dade County, but also in Broward. Uh, we can't afford to give him any of our money. Sorry. It's, it's ridiculous. I think we should tax sporting events and financial managers' profits to help pay for schools and right. books. Right. I was thinking that yesterday. Right. How come we don't put a tax on every goddamn ticket that's sold for sporting events, a school tax? It's ridiculous. Because obviously the lottery money ain't doing it, so let's just stick money on tax on there. Oh, it's ridiculous. Hey, Neil, I love your uh, your uh, musical parodies, guy. Okay. All right, I'm out of here. Have a great day. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Jesse the body says organized religion is a sham and a crutch for weak minded people. Nice going, Jesse. There you go. Oh. We're not getting much response on that, but you know something I say, right F it on, baby. The number of people that got bought and then of course Warren Beatty wants to run for president. How do you like that? Warren frickin' Beatty. See, even whether you liked Reagan or not, which I certainly did not, but the fact is at least he was governor of California. Before he did the, before they had the chutzpah to run him for president. Here's Warren Beatty, a washed up, wrinkled up piece of turd actor with a big, uh, schlong, and he thinks he's gonna run for goddamn president? Based on what? Based on what? And then, and then of course, don't forget the Donald. Oh yeah, the Donald. He's also gonna run. Here's a guy that's such a brilliant businessman, he got screwed out by, Mar by Merv Griffin, that brilliant, uh, <laughs> yeah, entrepreneur. And he's gonna run for president. Speaking of, of uh, entrepreneur, yeah, good news if there is any today. Yes, Ted Arison. Dead, dead. Ted Arison is dead. Let's have a party. Oh, All right. Oh, Where'd you get that from? We just had a confirmation. It was on six. It was on six ten. So what's going to happen with the nine billion dollars? Don't we get it? That he ran off to Israel with. Here's the Arison family, including let's slip in the Mickey with this American Airlines Miami Heat Arena, with their cruise ship business. Siphoning all these people from the airport, all right, on the uh, to the goddamn port of Miami, onto the cruise ships, taking all of these tourists out of here, all with the support and encouragement of the Miami Herald that they're in bed with. 
and every one of their ships, ports registry to Zanzibar, ports registry to uh, Newfoundland, ports registry to some any place but America to make sure that none of the tax money comes back to this country. And they have siphoned not millions with an M, but billions with a B out of this town. And Daddy took his $9 billion and ran off to Israel. Didn't pay any taxes on it. But you know something? Now he's dead. Oh! Won't do him any good now. Oh, man, that, that gave me reason to continue here. Reason to move on. The people who are doing the worst to screw and destroy and screw over this town and to siphon the lifeblood out of it, those are the ones that the, the power brokers love because they're all in bed together, the Herald and Mayor Pinga, all of these people. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Thank God for Jesse Ventura. Yes, sir. Pardon the uh, expression. I'm a season ticket holder for the Miami, uh, Florida Marlins, wherever the hell they are. And the Miami Marlins, yeah. I don't have a problem with the stadium. Leave it there. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let's what's the problem? On, spend the money where we need it. Let me say it again. The Expos broke even. They drew nine thousand people a game. So what's this guy crying about? Absolutely, absolutely. And and by the way, keep in mind, the Expos are going to finish about three games ahead of the Marlins. (laughs) Have a great day, Pat. All right. Okay. How do you like that? I mean, they got a crap team, and they recognize it, and they're going to try to upscale, and they're going to get an infusion of money, not uh, private money, not public, for next year. But how do you like that? Somehow they managed to scrape by, and they were honest enough to be forthcoming to say, well, guess what? We uh, were optimistic because in spite of the horrible year we had, we didn't lose any money. What a breath of fresh air that is. Parley Booby didn't lose no money. Up there in Montreal, those freaking frogs. Or is this guy, I can't make it. Boy, I tell you, it's got to be an S&M town. The people here have got to be masochists. I mean, they must just love being whipped and beaten and squeezed and brutalized. And they must uh, be really into it. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing? Okay. Um, well, the ultimate truth is that no matter how much you screw the people, no matter how much you steal, you can't take it with you, baby. Right. Ted Erickson and is dead. Rectum. Right. Oh, Rectum. Right. Yeah, that too. Jesse Ventura for president all the way. Right. And one more thing about these, uh, the blacks and the Cubans, they keep on blocking the roads. I'm going to tell you one thing. They're going to become hood ornaments. Love you, Neil. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, maybe they'll be in the hood ornament. Five six seven. The boys in the hood ornament. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. The Hank Goldberg show at two. Five o'clock this afternoon. It's Jimmy. We could be something special. Johnson. Wonder what he's going to have to say about Demetrius Underwood. By the way, probably announced to us that he's going to sit out the season. Something really dynamic like that. And keep in mind, of course, we're concerned about Demetrius for his uh, sanity and for his welfare. Are we concerned about him? No. Oh. Here's a, a mobile in Pompano. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hey, Nick, how you doing? Okay. Yeah, I read an article or something um, about you. Um, they said, are you going to resign with them, uh, the radio station, when your um, contract is up? An article in the Sun Sentinel where? It was concerning you and the contract with, um, with um, QAM. They said your contract will be up in three years. Where was uh, that? In the Sun Sentinel, in the local. When? I think it was Wednesday. There was, there was no article about my contract. You mean the article in Josie Lambeat's column about the OJ thing? Yeah, but then they had you and concerning your contract. Yeah. And I want to know, are you going to renew with them? No, I'm not. Well, what will, uh, I'll be able to find you. I love your show, and um, we already lost a pay guy. I'll, give you, I'll give you my address in Amsterdam, okay, pal? All right, thank okay, you. Okay, see ya. Come over in the smoke a little number with me. Five six seven. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man. Five six seven. Oh five sixty. Pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. This guy's worried about three years from now. I'm worried about three minutes from now. The way things are going around here lately. There's only one person to blame, and that's the guy with the dark suit that was in here earlier. You know, acting really outraged today. He should have been equally outraged or more outraged a week ago. But the problem is he's got a bunch of little people that he's spoiled. There's nobody else to blame for their behavior but him because he's given he's allowed them to do this. He's given them the latitude, given them the rope, and he's the one that's allowed them to do this, to run their little empires here while he's busy doing God only knows what. Busy having meetings with Wayne Hypinga and John Henry and all these other goyim. You know, sooner or later, you got to take the bull by the horns and a certain little bit of goddamn management and say, hey, the crap is going to stop now. 
And when you have incestuous relationships with too many of these people, which I've told you many times before, that's the goddamn honest truth right there. When you have incestuous relationships, it's kind of hard to cut the cord. But for the sake of the rest of us, have a little Rahmanas on those of us who come here and contribute something every day, who bring ratings to this radio station, who bring revenue to this radio station. The people on the air here who get who suck hind tit, basically, except for the goddamn money we get. And the only reason we get that money is because it's written on a piece of paper. It's in our contract somewhere. Every other promise you get out of these people, you could wipe your ass with. That's what you can do with it. How's Kid Curry doing my Backstreet Boys tickets, by the way? I mean, that that's that's criminal. And that's such a minuscule thing. I mean, you know, I could survive without going to that thing as much. It's right next door to my house, so I'd like to go see it. But they're not reissuing those tickets, so naturally, if he's actually got them, if he had them, then he, they should be in here right now for December 5. You know, just a little something, just a little bone, a little anything, just to show a little bit of good intentions, just to kind of turn things around a little bit. Like, see, we actually intend to live up to our promises. Our word isn't totally crap. You think I'm going to see those anytime soon? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. On the AT&T. No, seriously, they're oblivious, man. Everything in here, it's like with the T-shirts and the caps and the station of paraphernalia that they expect the people here to pay for. These are things that George and I never heard of before. I've been in this business for 7,000 years before Marconi was around. When they had crystal sets, that's how long I've been in this goddamn business. And to think that you try to make the hired hands here pay for station uh, caps and T-shirts, this is unconscionable. That's how cheap these bastards are. And they got the chutzpah to sit me in a room and tell me how many millions and millions and millions of dollars they're pouring through Power 96 in this station every month. Well, great. That's wonderful. I know I'm responsible for a big chunk of it. And I can live without the goddamn cap and the T-shirt. I'm not looking for it. But how about all these other uh, poor bastards around here that don't get squat? Because we got ex-jocks running around here who contribute nothing to this place who are sucking big fat paychecks two every two weeks out of this joint. Not to mention no names, of course. Roy! Here's a lady mobile in Pompano. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, ma'am. Long-time listener, never caller. Okay. And I just decided to call you today because I was so upset over Bill Lindsay being traded. Yes. It just seems like they take the most popular players and trade them away and send us Chris Wells or somebody. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how Chris Wells is still on this team. You know what I think it is? I think it's stubbornness. They took so much heat for getting that Chris Wells deal and trading away Barnes and uh, Woolley, I think that they're just determined that they're going to jam him down our throats, you know, and he just doesn't have it. He ain't got it. I know. That and, and he, Woolley was and he, really and coming And he really on. put Brewery out of uh, commission. Can you imagine if he would have injured him the other day? Oh, please. I can't, I can't even think about Chris Wells. He can't even skate backwards. Right. It's terrible. But I wanted to go. He can't well, skate. He can't score. But other than that, he's a hell of a guy. Yeah, big guy. Right. He looks good in the suit. That's the only thing. But I said, you're talking about running for president. Who are we going to vote for between Bush and Gore? Jeez, I'm looking for somebody. Gore's not going to get it. Bradley's going to get it. Let me say it again. Bill Bradley's going to get the Democratic nomination, not Al Gore. I hope you're right. Okay, trust me. All right, Neil. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Good luck to us. Oh, I got a headache. Man, my head's about to just bounce right off my neck. Five six seven oh five sixty. And by the way, George Corso, I want to tell you something. You, I, I have never heard so many stories about the same thing with this phone. I, I am counting 122 different stories now that I've heard about the reason why the phone needs to be changed. It doesn't need to be changed. Why we're going to do this? Why we can't do that? Just do it. Just do something, okay? Do something for us, please, soon. That's all. It's only two years now. Today is October one. Today is our two-year anniversary, at least legally, here at QAM. Do something. Make it look good. 27 past noon at 560. We buy you a milkshake. That's what we need. Prozac. Now, this is for uh, Roy and Sam. Sucks to be you. Anyway. Friday, you bastard. 3456 WQM. Here's your facts from Steve Spack. Spick? Spack? 
speaks back in uh, Connecticut, no less. It says, listen to you when I was living in Florida in the 80s in your WIOD days. WIOD? Oh, I hate that station. I'm living in Connecticut now. In a few weeks ago, I came across your uh, website and listened to you on the real player on the Internet. Good to hear you're not going to be dead. Good luck. Nice hearing from you, Steve. Up there at Connecticut. Oh, by the way, so uh, those of you who want to get more information about Jesse Ventura and his statements and uh, where you can get the numbers of those legalized prostitutes and a good uh, weed, just check out the skunk line. No, just look on uh, neilrogers.com. You'll see Jesse's picture, and we got the uh, his website and all the other stuff. Everything you need to know to get uh, in touch with Baldy. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T line as we continue plugging our way along here till 2 o'clock. There's an outside chance we might make it, and I do mean outside. Here's Palm Springs uh, North. Hello. Palm Springs. Oh, they moved to 7. I don't know why they didn't disconnect. They moved to 7? Oh, they, he got Okay, let's try Palm Springs over here. Hello. You moved to <laughs> hey, another Neil, line. How do you like that? How you doing, Neil? Okay. Hey, um, about Jesse the Body. I, I, I like him, you know, what I've seen in him so far. I mean, as far as a, uh, a president... I mean, it's, it, the bums that we've been putting in there, there's no reason why this guy couldn't go in there. Yeah, At least he's, he got, he's got a chance, though. He now. makes sense. But uh, I don't like his stand on gun, handguns, though. He says, you know, uh, gun control is how how good you can aim. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, but I'm, I guess everybody has to have their bad points, right? Uh, hey, I was reading this thing in uh, this raw data. It says, uh, it says, uh, the. Of the 428 law clerks hired by the current nine uh, justice of the Supreme Court, only eight of them were black. Out of the 550 hockey players in the NHL, nine of them are black. Yeah. Uh, hey, can I call somebody to do well, so what, what does that mean? Well, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of ironic. Only eight people, eight of the 428 law clerks hired by the nine Supreme Court justices, only eight of them were black. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty, well, I don't know. I mean, that's a, a lot. I mean, of, of, of white people, anyway. Hey, hey. Sounds good to me. <laughs> hey, Neil, the like Copenhagen guy. is a lot of beautiful white people there. What's wrong with that? Well, no, there's nothing wrong well, with that. I'm having a place people. where there's a lot of nice white people. I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I, no, I just thought it was kind of odd. You no, wanna, just, if you want to find places where there's a lot of Schwarzes, I'll give you all kinds of... Uh, uh, no, I, I used to live in a, a bad neighborhood. I'll take so you up I'm... to Detroit. We'll go take a drive down 12th Street. Okay. Take it easy, Neil. Okay, have a great day. Bye. Okay. Nine black hockey players in the NHL. How do you like that? See, the deal is most of the hockey players are from uh, Europe and uh, Canada, few Americans. But most of them are from countries where there aren't very many Schwarzes, so uh, what can I tell you? But, and, and like I've said a million times before, it's a white people's sport. I mean, the Schwarzes took over baseball, they took and uh, also the Hispanics, and the uh, Schwarzes took over uh, the NBA entirely and the National Football League, so leave something for the white guys. What's wrong with that? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's a call from Rochester. Hello. Hi Neil. Yes sir. Hey, long time, first time. All right. I uh, just here's a call Florida. from Cobbs Hill. Yeah, I'll go to John and Bob's for you. All right. I just left uh, Florida two weeks ago, and I'm missing the heck out of you. So I'm listening to you on the net. Great. And I'm wondering if you can play the Dolphin song with uh, Brian Cox. Oh yeah, sure. Uh huh. Right. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, Neil. Uh, long time now. listener, first time caller. All right. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the schools and, and uh, Jesse Body Ventura. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from Minnesota, and uh, I was well, I went to school there, grade school, high school, and whatnot. The schools down here just are pathetic. The worst. The worst. And uh, I have a nine-year-old daughter who's in the third grade here in Pines, and I put her in the charter school over here. And one thing that's better about the charter school versus the public schools is the parents have to volunteer like 20, 25 hours a year right. to, to keep your child there. And there's the classrooms running like 20 students per teacher. Mm -hmm, the way it is, should be. Which way it should be. But uh, where our schools really fall out is expectations. My daughter came home with homework the other day. How to t how to learn how to uh, tell time. Third grade. A clock. A big old clock with hands. We're going to try to teach her how to spell, you know tell time. She brought Third grade. clock home? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. It's Are they going to also teach you the difference between yes and no? Yeah, exactly. Right. You know that. That's how to kind count of from one to five? That's about it. Here's three plus three, four plus four. You know, in the second grade, how to tell time in the third grade. Right. What kind of expectations is that? As low as that's the, that's the American effing way, man. That's the way it works. But in third grade, they teach you nothing, right? Absolutely not. When that's... I was when I was in high school in my senior year, we had a, a young 
uh, American history teacher who was as dumb as the, as the fallen snow. And this guy, he spent a whole semester on teaching the presidents in order from one to whatever we had at that time. Whole semester. Then. And he spent the whole semester on it. And you know something? Two-thirds of the class, which I already knew them, and the whole class, by the end of the semester, most of the class didn't know them anyway. Absolutely. I think we got as far as Lincoln. So, I mean, that's, that's the problem with Florida schools. No, that's the problem with, with American schools. Florida schools are among the worst. But American schools, like you say, the expectation is so low. And what they teach you is, when I went to Michigan State, the reason that I decided to screw around for two years that I was there and not waste my time going to class is they were rehashing stuff that I had in my junior and senior years in high school. I wasn't learning anything. Oh, I, it was that, a joke. That's true right now because the first semester of the third grade is revisiting, you know, like the middle part of the second grade. Right. Why are we wasting our kids' time? Yeah, but just look at this. You've got a nice new clock there anyway. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, pal. Okay. And what about Jesse Va- the body venture? He's He would be a great president. Yeah, but he, like I said, he's already buried himself because he's too honest. He's talking about things that make too much sense. The American public, they can't deal with that. They're too immature. Well, the, the Legalizing thing, pot and, and prostitution and not get organized religion. I mean, he's just uh, too against the mainstream. They'll never go. They'll never buy into it. And anybody here in the Florida or in Miami Beach or South Beach who doesn't realize that prostitution is already legalized, just not taxed, yeah. it's ridiculous. You go on South Beach at any time of the night, and you see the prostitutes going up and down the street, and the cops are sitting right there. Hey, they don't give a hoot. Forget about that. Just go into singles bars. It's uh, it's legalized. It's legalized. Have a great day, pal. And it's pretty expensive, too, those dinners and those drinks. Can't beat that gator meat. <laughs> Hi there, how are you? You looking good. Looking good. <laughs> Finally got a mortgage for our pad. I guess twenty five percent interest ain't bad. <laughs> well, it's a major score. Thank you, mommy store. In just a couple of months, we're moving in, honey. Naked women filling our pool with gin. Sin, sin, baby, I love Chappaqua. I'm living in Westchester County. I love Chappaqua. Just come over the Tennessee. All my penthouse magazines are packed. Bubble wrap my water bong, that's fact. Well, DC's such a dive, I'm heading north of 95. I keep smiling and I know why. Well, why? Can't wait to ride the coaster and ride. It's uh, 12.45, but that thing just, I mean, like that. Like, 12.45 at 5.60 WQAM, 5.670, oh, 5.60, pound 5.60 on the AT&T. Well, kind of like our calls do during every break, like that. Just sit here, like, just watch him uh, flip off the thing there. So let's talk to George Corso about that phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's a lady mobile in Davie. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Neil. Yes, I am. Long, long time fan. Listening to for years. Uh-huh. Big, big hockey fan. Yeah. I'm also a bartender in a, a sports bar here in Davie. Anytime you're in the area, I'd appreciate you coming by so you and I can talk hockey. But I wanted to make a couple comments on uh, Bill Lindsay's trade. And it's unfortunate that we do have to let good players go, but nobody's going to want the weaker players. Who wants Chris Wells? Right. That's true. I mean, I mean, we can't. We we're can't. Not gonna not gonna anything, gonna... We're not going to get anything for him. But my question is, why did they bother resigning him before the season? Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't know how he ever got here anyway. I've been listening to you when Stu Barnes left. Fortunately, he went to the Penguins, which is my is my favorite hockey team. So, uh-huh. it was, I mean, it was good for the Penguins. Unfortunately, he's left the Penguins. But, right. Um, I, I'm going my... to be real honest with you. The last two seasons, as much as I liked him and he was here from the start, and that goal, you know, I have the big poster at, at home of that great – goal he scored against the Bruins in the playoffs, which is the most famous goal probably in Panthers history so far. But Billy Lindsay the last two years had been doing less and less and he really wasn't contributing very much. And even though he tried hard and he was a, a hard, you know, gut- That's what I was gonna say. he didn't really contribute a lot to this team. My only question is, you know, you know, this business about toughness, 
that, to me, that's just a, a cliche. That's a bunch of bull crap. You need guys who are productive is what you need, guys out there who can score, guys who are productive, guys who are really skilled players. And Todd Simpson, I hate to break the news to you, he's a tough-nosed, uh, hard-hitting defenseman, but he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't bring what we really need to this team. We, we, can't, yeah. we can't go out and get 10 guys to protect Pavel Bure because the organization is so paranoid about if Bure, you know, somebody sneezes on him. It's a contact sport, you know. You have to, you have to take your best shot. Absolutely. I've had season tickets for seven years. I actually, I actually find myself right now, well, like I said, I'm a true lover of hockey, not just the Panthers. The Panthers, because I live here, was a great way to see right. all the other teams and all the players. That's what I'm, you know, I love hockey. I like players on all mm-hmm. teams. But uh, like I said, I wanted to invite you to Lefty's Wings and Love Bar next to Home Depot and Davey. Okay. Anytime you want to talk, you want dinner, wings, I'm me. My name is Sue. And okay, I'm at Sue. the bar. And I uh, love listening to you. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, Sue. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Why was she laughing? Isn't she going to be there tomorrow night? Five six seven tomorrow night's opening night. By the way, Washington Caps and the Florida Panthers. Is the game sold out? By the way, do we have any idea? It wasn't as of the last time I checked. Opening night better be sold out. Can't sell opening night out. You got real problems down the road, sweetheart. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Miami. Hello, Neil. How are you? Pretty good. Happy hockey season too. And happy uh, circus. Yeah, that too. Just gotta tell you that my wife just moved down here to start working in the Dade schools. Mm-hmm. And I wish you knew a half of the stuff that went on there. You're talking about the food. Right. They put food out at 10 a.m. because they have 36,000 kids. They have to get through the classes. Mm-hmm. So the the uh, the mayonnaise and the and the juices mm. and the salad dressings. Mm. The kids get to eat about two fifteen. Ooh, I bet you about I bet you about one uh, one fifteen one thirty. The botulism is thick enough you can cut it with your toenail. Well, it's, it's really nice because the uh, the cafeteria is about ninety five degrees. Uh huh. And of course, all the um, mm. all the, the the employees there at the cafeteria are wearing their shower caps. Right. And so about two fifteen soon, but ninety. And can you degrees. imagine how much snot you can get in there by one fifteen one thirty when you're picking your nose and. Pretty appetizing stuff. Like in your Rectum. Rectum. Yeah. And uh, why, I don't understand why people are, are beefing about the fact that their kids don't have books. If they had books, that means they'd actually have to use them, and half the staff there don't, don't even know how to use them. Right. It, it's a joke. And and the bigger joke is that most of the people who live here don't give a crap. No, we'd rather have a baseball stadium. It's you know, it's just it's a it's like a daycare center. It's a place to send your kids off to get them out of out of your hair for a few hours. So there's a rumor going around that next week there's going to be the WQAM Ted Kaczynski. Ted Kaczynski opening. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to be there. That's right. Well, go Leafs, go. A- amen. Talk to you later. See ya. By the way, does anybody know if the Leafs signed uh, uh, Yuskevich last night? Yeah, what am I asking for? Huh? Dimitri Yuskevich? We don't know. They signed Brian Berardi yesterday. Oh! Nobody here knows who that is, by the way. 5670560. Pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. 400 open lines here. Tomorrow night, opening hockey uh, game. Washington Caps at the Florida Panthers. That lady from the bar in Davie, she called. This guy, he's a hockey fan. So that's two. Here's Cooper City. Hello. Neil, how the hell are you today? Okay, sir. I got to tell you some little school story. I got a kid in sixth grade, right? He comes home the other day with an F on his math test. I go ballistic on him. Yeah. So then, you know, after I calm down, I say, okay, well, let's look at this test. This damn teacher marked like eight of the problems wrong. And I'm sitting there like, you know, it's like sequence of numbers. And you think, okay, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I can figure out that. Yeah. And I'm like, it's got to be C. It's got to be. And this, this bitch, she marks, you know, the kid has an A, and she marked them all. And you know what she says? I mean, I, re- I reamed him an ass when he got home, you know, how can you do this? Right. And she, all she says is, oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake. And I'm like, fucking bitch. Exactly. And you know, one other thing about the old Wayne, you see his latest little stunt, he, not that I care about the Panther stock, but how he changed it now to RST instead of, Panthers holding out Boca Resorts. Right. Oh, yeah, he's, fa- he's phasing the Panthers out of it. I mean, every, every year he changes the uh, the ticker <laughs> symbol, and it, it's like, you know, just think of all the people that bought that crap. Thank God I was smart enough not to. Yeah, it's a little bait and switch is what it's called. Yeah. I mean, now the Panthers are like a little tiny glimmer of the Boca Resorts. Right. Thing. This guy, he's a scum, and as far as the base, if they, you know, and I, I, this guy yesterday called about the Flanagan High. It is true. I got a kid that goes there as well. 4,300 yeah. kids? I don't know about the exact population, but they got this little, it looks like a little army barracks on Pines Boulevard, mm-hmm. and there is no shower. And you know what? I called the school board just to say, well, what's the story with that? Well, you know, you get these people that they don't know. It, it, it's, it, every, they build all these houses out there. You, you know they're building for families, 
Don't you think that the builder would even take a survey how many kids are going to live in the house or what's the you know what's the you know? No, no, no I no, I don't because it's the same thing. It's sense. the same thing with the roads here. It's like five ninety five. It was obsolete before they finished building it. It's like everything else that's done down here. These are a bunch. Don't you understand? This is a yokel state. These are yokels trying to do things that they have no concept of how to do. But you know, even like when these people go into a new builder's or these are mugwumps. How many people are going to be? In, obviously, people who are bu- buying three hundred, two hundred thousand dollar houses with five and six bedrooms. They're not living for just two people. Right. Why can't they even project that ahead? I mean, it's, you know, the, the, the cities let these builders come in, knock the land down. I mean, the, because, because their mentality is the same as the, as the teacher that gave your kid the wrong grade on his test. Exactly. Board. And you know, I know she did was say, "Oh, sorry." And I'm yeah. like, you know, I almost, you know, not that I was gonna, you know, I, I just, I, I just take a paddle over there and paddle the crap out of that. And I, I was ready to. You know, I'm ready to take the paddle to her ass. Right, that's right. She's got a big ass. You ought to take your kid to school and just uh, let him paddle her ass, her big fat ass. Yeah, can I have a sofa king in honor of this bitch? Okay. Thanks. See ya. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, or two or three. Like I said, let's start taking a survey of some of these principals and teachers that we got in Dade County and some in Broward. People that, like I said, have to sign an X for their name. People that do not be speaking uh, proper English. It's just embarrassing. You see them on TV and they're, talk- they're talking bubonics. They're talking crap. They're talking caca. They're talking banana boat talk, some of them. And they're teaching your kids? Who the hell is anybody <laughs> kidding, huh? Here's Miami. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, sir? Great. Listen, I got a little story about uh, the cops. Uh, that Something happened to me last week. I know you've been off that subject for a couple of days, and I heard it in the car, on I guess, on Tuesday, but I didn't get a chance to, to call till now. But all the, the black people complaining about every every action of the cops is, is right. racially motivated. Mm-hmm. I'm a white guy, uh, 35 years old. I live in in the Gables. Uh, last Thursday night, I'm going over to uh, Burger King to get a uh, bite to eat around around 10:45. Yeah. A uh, uh, Miami-Dade cop got behind me. I wasn't you know doing anything wrong as far as traffic stuff. Driving a, uh, a 1998 uh, white Mitsubishi. And uh, he pulls me over after about five minutes, and uh, I step out of the car, and the guy is, like, really nervous. He's got his hand right on his gun already, uh, almost drew it on me. Um, I'm real clean cut, got short hair, uh, white guy, and he stopped me actually in the gables. And, uh, you know, he's, you know, Yeah, what's a white guy like you doing in the gables? Well, you know, I, I was, I realized he was stopping me because, you know, it wasn't because of something traffic related. Right. And, uh, and then he tells me, well, there was a uh, an APB, or, you know, they call it a bolo, just put out on a white guy driving a white Mitsubishi, uh, just like yours, uh, that just robbed a uh, at gunpoint the Winn Dixie right down the street. A white Bronco, a white Ford Bronco. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, white <the> Mitsubishi. <laughs> a white Mitsubishi, but uh, I'm sure you know he he was really nervous, and I had a belt bag on. If I had reached for my belt bag, I'm sure he would have drawn that gun and uh, and and wouldn't have hesitated. Don't to me reach away. for your waistband, sir. Yeah, and Trust I'm positive that that's... just ask Sherry Winston tastes good like a jackass should. Yeah, and that was a white cop, and, and I'm sure he was being motivated by by fear of, of crime, not because right. uh, of any any racial things. So. Right. Uh, that was it. Just wanted to share that with you. Okay, pal. I'm glad hey, you're still with us. Okay, All right, thanks. <laughs> Don't reach for your waistband because, like Sherry Winston, tastes good like your ass should. Says. All these guys reaching for their waistband. Oops! Don't do it again. I guess you won't. It's that waistband thing. Five six seven oh five. It's like in sync. There's a waistband. No. Hurricane f***ing blow! It's the one to two hour! Listen to me, this is Stan Feinstein for Sofa King, you understand? Where everything is held to the high Sofa King standards. The selection isn't just huge, it's Sofa King huge. Believe me, you'll never shop anywhere else. And Sofa King's prices aren't just low, they're Sofa King low. You'll never find them anywhere else. Listen to me. When I say Sofa King has a beautiful store, I mean Sofa King beautiful. When I say the staff is helpful, I mean Sofa King helpful. Listen to me. Get to know the Sofa King and enjoy a selection that's Sofa King huge. A staff that's Sofa King courteous and prices that are Sofa King low. You'll never shop anywhere else. But don't take it from me. Take it from satisfied customer Frank and Stein. Uh, Sofa King good. You said it, Frankie. Sofa King good. Oh, and by the way, NHL season starts tonight for the four hockey fans out there, for the Athena fans. (laughs) 
enough of that. Can we just pray that this is the last we hear of Wayne Gretzky night, please? As the uh, Rangers are playing in Edmonton, it's on uh, Madison Square MSG, it's on a small dish, it's on TBC, it's on everywhere. And it's the 800th goodbye to 99. Bye, Wayne, okay? Bye, Needle Nose. Have a great life, but enough with him already, please. This guy's been saying goodbye longer than uh, goddamn Michael Jordan. Goodbye, Wayne. Have a good life, okay? Go make some babies. Get out of here. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Yeah, it's an exciting time of year for those of us who are real hockey fans. All four of us. I mean, there'll be thousands of people at the Macarena tomorrow night, and wouldn't it be nice if they really understood what the hell was going on? Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Good. You know what? I've really enjoyed your show this week. You've hit on some really great topics. You know, I, the, the O.J. Simpson thing. The only thing that you can say about that is that. Your station obviously does not care about its sponsors, nor does it care any iota about Center One. There, there's one word that is lacking in this place. That word is credibility. This station doesn't understand what the word means. They don't care about their own credibility. They don't care about the credibility of those of us on the air. They don't care about the credibility of our sponsors, of uh, Center One, of the things that we get involved in promoting. And that's unconscionable. I mean, you know, if they don't care about their own credibility, that's bad enough. But don't suck the rest of us into it. Absolutely. Well, you know, and the other... You know, a couple of the other topics you talked about, as far as the individual that got shot down in Miami, he may have deserved it, he may not have deserved it. The only person that can actually say anything at this point is the police officer, right. because dead men don't talk. Right. You know, that's the other thing. But lastly, the school issue. I really wanted to call your show when you were talking about that. I have an 11-year-old that attends a school in Pembroke Pines right. that carries probably a 15 to 18-pound backpack every day because there are no lockers in the school. They have to have five to six different. Well, well they have it like a school chiropractor too for the kids. Well, you know, it's really bad because they're talking about you know, they, what they recommend to the parents is that you go out and you purchase one of these little rolling backpacks now, as opposed to the ones that they carry on their back. You know, like you, you know, people carry in their luggage. Right. You know, they're missing the like whole the same, point. Like, like the kids are going to the airport, not to school. Absolutely, they are missing the whole point. I I thought it was so ironic that our legislature found $15 million to save the Miami circle, but we cannot right. correct the school problem. Right. $600,000. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the mayor and Merritt Steerheim and Juan Medea, they're having a circle jerk at the circle right now. Well, wait, $600,000 to do a study on an obsolete I-75 and 595, right. which they knew when they were building we're gonna it. going to be obsolete before they finished, right? Absolutely, because right. everybody's moving out. Everybody wants to live at the the, the end of the Everglades. Mm -hmm. You know, it. I tell you what, government in itself is is really piss poor. We, as the people that put these people in office, listen to them, and and you know what, we have to hope for the best. They sell us one thing, just like Mayor Penis, and I'm really glad I don't live in Miami. You know. He told us one thing, and he did another with the Mickey Harrison thing. Mm -hmm. I'm By the becoming... way, Ted Harrison is dead. I'm glad you reminded me, sir. Oh! I, I'm becoming a hockey fan, but I will not buy tickets to the National Car Rectal Center right. because of the fact that I won't support anything that takes dollars away from our children's education. Mm -hmm. I will not support the, Mi the new Miami Airlines Arena, whatever it's called down there, because I happen to agree that here's a guy that's got a gazillion dollars that won't build his own stadium. Okay, and have a great day. Of course, we were, you know, given a song and a dance that Mickey Harrison did build the American Airlines Arena, and he did pay for part of the construction cost, but the fact is the taxpayers are they're going to be the ones to take it up the rectum, as you were lied to again by Mayor Pinga, who did that sudden about face. I mean, who is, are you kidding anybody, Mr. Mayor? You're owned lock, stock, and barrel. You're not fooling anybody, even the dumbest of the dumb, even the most professional of the Cubanos. You're not fooling them either. I mean, Cuban politicians, they're a dime a dozen. We'll, we'll let Bert Hernandez out, okay? Put him in there. Maybe he can go after his uh, wife and that lawyer friend. 5670560, oh, pound 560. How's that divorce coming, Bert? Oh, oh it's all done? Ten-second divorce. Like I said, don't trip on the chains on the way back to your cell. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Sunrise. Going once. Long gone. Here's a mobile in Hollywood. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Hollywood. Um, could you have Hello? Yes, sir. Speak to me. Two reasons why the Miami school district sucks. Yes. There is truth to the, to the expression, those who can do, those who can't teach. Right. 
the teachers in Miami are dumber than most of the students. Dumber than sawdust, yes. The second reason is the first three to four years of schooling in Miami is taught teaching these kids how to speak English. It drives me nuts that my kid who goes to school has got to spend half of her class time listening to a bunch of kids who don't understand the English language and who've got to, and, and my tax money is being spent to teach these kids English. Mm -hmm. They don't learn English at home and they really ought to and the taxpayers shouldn't have to support this English as a second language crap that's being taught in the schools right now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thanks. Okay, see ya. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. You look at a country where there's many functionally illiterate people walking around. You ought to see the faxes I get. And I'm not talking from people who are like uh, dummies. I mean, you can tell. Not from people who are like total retards. From people who allegedly at least got enough intelligence to send a fax. And you read, and there's uh, you know something thoughtful there, and uh, there's uh, something that maybe make a little sense. But you look at the spelling. And you say to yourself, yeah, yeah like that, like what, who, what is this? What, where did these people go to school? Did they get like a fourth rate education? No, you can't, you can't get an education here. I mean, the majority, I'd say like 70% of the people in this country are dumber than sawdust. And keep in mind that 40 to 50% of the people, and this isn't something I'm making up, this has been a steady figure for years now, 40 to 50% are functionally illiterate. Viva America, baby! They don't come any dumber than the Americans. And they like it that way, of course. That's part of the game plan. Keep them dumb. Keep them pregnant and keep them dumb. Eight minutes after one at 560 WQM, because once you've got a little bit of a brain, then you become dangerous. Be like this is we sing like the seas but we must tell you we swear we're not gay if you want these outfits to class they would take your WQAM 5670560. That's our toll free number for Dayton Broward. Well, we get that 800 number, by the way. Uh, Monroe County, Palm Beach County, Lee County, all over the goddamn universe will be able to call us. Are we going to live long enough to see it? No. We sure hope so. Pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Miami. Hello. Good afternoon, Neil. Yes, sir. I, I, I looked the other day and there wasn't that many games on opening night tonight on, uh, Direct TV. Because sure the range, range they're, only, they're only playing two games. They're only two games being oh, played. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what kind of a schedule this is. I mean, Gary Bettman again needs help. You know, we realize that this Sunday, the the third day of the season, there are no games on Sunday. That's kind of crazy. I, exactly. I don't get it. I don't understand what they're thinking about. I thought Fox had all those games on Sunday. No, but all, Fox doesn't get involved till after football. You know that. Oh, that's true. All right. Have a good day. Okay. 
Yeah, we only got two games tonight, the Penguins and the Stars, and you got your Rangers at Edmonton, which is on just about everywhere. Some of us will be watching on the CBC, huh? Big time, about two or three of us. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's a mobile in Boca. Hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, just I wanted to let you know, I, I've been uh, with this Panther thing, and that ticket, I've been a season ticket holder for over four years. Yes. And this year, for the first year, we just said, you know what, it's just such a hassle and such an aggravation, forget it, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy individual game tickets as they come up. Right. Well, I've been trying for two weeks to buy tickets. You try to go out and you get on this Ticketmaster junk, and uh, they turn around and tell you, well, we only got one section available, section so-and-so 114 up in the back, row 25. And then I said, okay, well, I'm not doing that. I want better seats, so I'll go out to the, to the center and get them from the box office. Mm-hmm. So they're using the Ticketmaster outlet thing anyway. But what they tell you is, is, well, we're not releasing any of the good seats until we make sure the season tickets are all bought out. And now they can't even sell out for uh, for opening well, night. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. What you're saying doesn't make any sense. What do you mean until well, the season tickets are all bought out? The uh, season well, tickets no, aren't all going to be all bought out. No, I know. What they're saying is they won't release any lower bowl tickets. They won't release any of the leftover Emerald Club tickets, any of the Lexus level tickets, until they're sure that they don't have somebody coming in there and buying uh, those special game packs where you could buy 20 games for X amount of dollars or, or what it is. They're only releasing certain sections yeah. until it gets down to either game day or the day before the game. Mm-hmm. So they're they're penalizing themselves and, and the people out there because they're not releasing all the tickets, saying, well, there's a hope that we might sell some more season tickets or some of these special package tickets we're only going to give you an offer the worst sections available until it gets closer to game time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they're shooting themselves in the foot. They did, want to fill the arena, offer, make it available to everybody. Did they offer you free binoculars, too? <laughs> yeah, that's just the problem, you know. Then they then when they check your binoculars to make, make sure they're not hollow when you're carrying liquor into the place. Right. <laughs> anyway, that's just a comment, Neil. They ought to open up the tickets a little earlier, and, uh, you know, we'll come out and we'll spend our 125 150 bucks a game. Yeah, hey, listen, so, they ought to kiss your ass. Yeah, well, thanks, Neil. Thanks okay, I'll see you there, pal. Thanks. All right, bye. Let's see, can we find out if O.J. charges a talent fee? It says, I have a sick feeling in my stomach that those conspirators at the station are holding back information. Oh, yeah, there's there's a lot of other stuff here that uh, we haven't uncovered yet, but we will. We will. we got uh, Sherlock Holmes coming in. we got Columbo. We're going to loan him Sammy Davis's spare eye. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. The enthusiasm, the excitement for the Panther opener against the Caps tomorrow night is so uh, thick you could <laughs> cut it with your goddamn uh, left toe. By the way, did you know Marilyn Monroe had six toes on one foot? Or, uh, one foot? No, I did not. Well, I'll show you. you got to read the Globe, man, which, by the way, says uh, Patsy and John Bonet- and uh, John Ramsey will be uh, charged very, very shortly. Hurry up already. Yeah, let's get with it. We can make some real mileage out of that. Where the hell is the picture here of Marilyn Monroe? And she had it chopped off in her extra toe, too. Here it is. Memories of Marilyn. And there's the, look at that. Those six tiny little toes. Before turning into a movie sex siren, she had a six toe removed from her left foot. And there is a picture, and here's a close-up. Six toes on her left foot. How do you like that, huh? So, in other words, if the Kennedys wanted to suck on Marilyn's toes, there was enough to go around for everybody. And even let uh, Jolt and Joe have one, too. Five, six, seven, oh, I wonder who's got the extra toe. Here's Coral Gables. Hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I just tuned in right now. Now, I can barely hear you. I, I'm on a pre phone. Right. Okay, do you have the Herald with you? It's in the wastebasket. Uh, on the weekend section, page 22? Yeah, OJ and the same. We already we started with that this All morning. Right. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Burn it. Thanks. Please, burn it. Anybody's got a copy of the Today's Herald Burnett Weekend section, page 21G? How come everybody says page? <laughs> they're close? We had somebody said page 20, and he says 22. It's right in the middle there. It's page 21G in the uh, weekend section of the Herald. And there's Sam Duque, and there's Roy Foster, and there's uh, O.J. in the middle, and his new bitch. And I mean, uh, yeah, we're pretty embarrassed about it. We're mortified, and we're disgusted, and we're nauseated, and they just keep rubbing it in and rubbing assault in the wounds and running around and, and using him as a weapon against all the rest of us, against the decent people that work here at WQAM who don't want to be associated with some murdering son of a bitch. I mean, you know, you've got to draw the line in the sand. I think this is the, at the place at which you do it. This is where it stops. The OJ crap, the OJ disease stops right here, man. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Here's Sunrise. Hello. Hey Neil, I know you, 
um, when I was in high school, I know, I know you're talking about middle school and elementary school, but... No, we're not. We're talking about all school. Well, <laughs> the food wasn't that bad, but even if you didn't like it, they had a sidebar where they sold mozzarella sticks. And... Yeah, okay, great. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line. Mozzarella sticks. Here's a, a mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Mobile in Palm Beach. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, education in the school. About yeah. what? About what? You want about, to talk about um. <laughs> yeah. Speak you know to me. Why, um, speak to me. Say something. Yes. You know why the other student was so stupid? Because the parents worried about sports. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Your mind is doing all so stupid? Too bad we can't be smart like him. I sure hope I can be smart someday like him. You know? You know? Uh-huh. Thank you. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Thank you, sir. And by the way, they've revoked your Visa, MasterCard, and American Express gold card. Here's Pompano. Hello. Is this uh, Pompano? Sounds like it. Pompano. Yes, sir. Neil? Yes, I am. Uh, we, maybe we could use some of the money from the golf tournament that you made to do help build the stadium. Oh, yeah. There you go. Would that work? Yeah, 23 grand. That'll go a long way. That'll build the, what, two seats? He's, he's riding around in a limousine, and you're sitting there suffering. Yeah. I don't get it. I'm not suffering. I'm doing okay. I'm driving a, a nice Corvette. I'm not suffering. I say we just, uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Here's a Tamarack. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, um, I want to comment on the education in uh, colleges. I don't know if you knew this, but um, in Florida colleges, you have to pass a class exam, which is kind of like a literacy test. Yeah. In order to go on to your junior year. Right. So, and the reason they were doing that is because that um, you know there are too many illiterate people coming out of college. That uh, doesn't say a whole lot for our higher education here in Florida. Oh man. Right. Well, maybe we ought to have social promotion all the way through, you know, just just so, to even the playing field out. Okay, pal, thank you. Whatever you said. Hey, you can't complain about the education in the state of Florida because basically there isn't any. I mean, there's a few. We got some bright students out there. I'm not knocking everybody. We got some real bright kids who like make a gigantic uh, Titanic effort on their own. But generally speaking, it's a sham and a farce, and that's because it's a Yahoo state and because you got crooked politicians, you got corrupt people in your goddamn school board, you got inept people, principals and school teachers who are illiterate, and you got a bunch of parents who are busy uh, playing bingo. Yeah. I don't know what the hell they're doing? I have no idea what the hell they're doing, and neither do they, obviously. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Hello, am I on the air? Sounds just like you. All right. Neil, uh, forget about the school system. You All know. right. I'm, I'm an only child, you know. I'm, I'm unemployed. I live with my mom. I'm 35 years old, and she's a millionaire, and I'm the executor of her will, so I could give a crap about all this Great. stuff. Great, excellent. But let's get down to the, the good stuff. I'd I was like to be your Tampa, close personal Florida. friend. I called you about three years ago. I do a lot of business over in Tampa, and I had a brush with greatness again. The same person, you, you'll never believe it. Peter North in the Tampa airport, a right. second time in three years, face to face, rapping with him for about ten minutes. He was doing a gig over there for Mons Venus. He's got to be getting pretty old now. He you know? looked terrible. Yeah, he's old. He had a bag. I think he's eighty-six. I mean, he can still shoot it pretty good, but he's eighty-six. His eyes were bagging out. He had a double chin. It looked like his uh, he hadn't been lifting weights. I was rapping with him about his book because when I saw him in Tampa, he signed my book. Uh, Penetrating Insights, and I told him, I go, I still got the book he signed. Yeah. He goes, you're a big fan. I go, yeah, you put on their uh, uh, best wishes, Dom, have loads of fun, Peter uh -huh. North. Sport, and, uh, sport, yeah. And I asked him about the adult film industry, and he says, it's only getting bigger. <laughs> that, was, that was his comment. <laughs> yeah. I go, really? He goes, it's only getting bigger. I don't bigger. think he's going to get any bigger. I think he's uh, big enough. But I asked him, I go, are you still making films? And he said, well... He said, you know, in and out of them. I'm in and out of the industry. I'm, I'm, he's it, in and out a lot from what got, I've seen. It's gotten a lot crazier, and he's just he's into the websites now, I guess. Right. Yeah, that's where the big money is now. You don't but even have in, to leave the house. Yeah, but uh, in closing, Neil, I mean, uh, anything would – how about the Mad Dog Sings Volume 2? I mean, he's the only guy that brings a smile to my – Or Or how about this? Hey, Neil, this is Randy West, and as per our phone conversation, I talked to Peter North the other day. 
He tells me your real name is Neil Down. Yes, sir. And he still ain't interested. Okay, have Neil, a great day. Go with some mandates. Okay, say hi to Peter. Okay, there you go. Go with some mandates. All right. Start programming the whole goddamn show. Okay, I think he's too obsessed with Peter. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. I always like Peter though. Here's a letter, by the way, from uh, oh boy, Lagomar Country Club. Copy of a letter is faxed to me, and of course it's written to Lou Ann Winnick, our sales manager. It says, Dear Luann, thank you very much for all the kind words regarding our staff's performance during WQAM Celebrity Golf Event on September 24th. However, you blindsided Lagomar with O.J. Simpson. No, on second thought, you just plain lied to us. We asked you specifically in a pre-event planning if Mr. Simpson had been invited or was expected. Your response was that it had been considered, but you decided against inviting him because of potential controversy. Naively, we took you at your word. Mr. Simpson's name did not appear on the contestants' lists and you did not indicate in any way that he was expected. When he did arrive, and I expect you knew he was coming, you made matters worse by having your assistant call every media organization in the area, including the National Enquirer. Luann Lagomar was a surprised and very reluctant host to Mr. Simpson. Your strategy to get him on property was underhanded but effective. Your comment to me that all publicity is good publicity may hold true for a radio station, but not, does not for a country club. The only protection we have from a reoccurrence when dealing with deceitful people is to not deal with them. Therefore, WQM will not be welcomed back at Lago Moore. Additionally, Lago Moore will in the future direct their advertising dollars away from WQAM. Yours truly, Chuck Hart, General Manager, Carbon Copy, Neil Rogers. Oh. Nice going, Chuck. That's the way it happens when you do business with liars, Chuck. Believe me, I know all about the liars. We got liars. Remember that show, The Liars Club? We could start our own right here inside this building. Lie and lie and lie and lie and play games and do all kinds of crap. The untouchables, the inside little country club we got going here at QAM. Those people who are getting in the way of those of us who are bringing in all the cash, those of us who are getting all the ratings, those of us who have built this radio station into what it is today, those people who think that they can continue playing their little goddamn games. You know the ones I'm talking about, the fearsome foursome. You know who I'm talking about. So I don't blame you, Chuck. And you can imagine how we feel, and believe me, that kind of publicity is not good for radio or country clubs or anybody else, because decent people don't want to be associated with him anywhere, including us. Let's frame that. Friday, you bastard. OJ, 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 you killed the cold, you killed the cold. OJ, 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 you killed the cold. That night, when she turned off all the lights, there's no place where she could hide. Oh no, oh she was gonna get her. OJ went out to kill 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 her. That One day, the jury's gonna set free OJ. For all we know, he's gonna head your way. Oh, yeah. And OJ's gonna get ya. OJ is gonna come after you And then he'll get away with that one to move Oh yeah, OJ's gonna get ya OJ's gonna get you, OJ's gonna get you OJ's gonna get you OJ's gonna get you Okay, it's gonna 
Okay, it's uh, 133 at 560 QM. So if there's anybody who thinks that, oh, you know, Neil and maybe Hank, too, we were, like, going overboard on the OJ thing, believe you me, you haven't seen the tip of the iceberg yet in terms of the psychosis that went on and the fallout from this fiasco because we have, you know, two or three irresponsible people in this place who will sacrifice all the rest of us so they can play their own little games, so they can use OJ as a weapon, so they can hang around with a celebrity, so they can be vicariously famous. You know, see, if it's me, there's two people, maybe three, but certainly two. They'd be out of here already. They'd be out the door. No questions asked. So we'll see, you know, come Monday if this is a real radio station or not, if they're serious about doing business here or not, because the embarrassment level, it's getting to the point where it's just almost uh, unendurable. Here's a lady mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. Yeah, how are you doing? Okay. I thought I'd share a short story with you. Um, my son, he's 17 years old. We live in Lighthouse Point. Right. And he was walking home from his part-time job yesterday. You know, he goes to school, gets home on the bus, and then he goes to his part-time job, and he's walking home. Right. And he comes home and he tells me, hey, Ma, guess what happened? You know, uh, two Lighthouse Point police pulled him over. Well, you know, he's walking. So he stopped him. Yeah. And they, uh, they stopped him because it was two hours after school had let out because he was walking slowly and because his book bag looked heavy. No. Oh. Yeah. Probably had at least a pound of weed in there, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a couple of hand grenades, too, from American Airlines. You know. <laughs> Unbelievable. So don't walk slow. <laughs> yeah, unless you're over the age of 100. Yeah. <laughs> if you're over the age of 100, you can walk slow and drive slow, and you'll never get stopped. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks for the good news. In your book bag. Thanks for the good news, sweetheart. Yeah. See you at Cemetery Village. All right. Okay. Oh. Yeah, like I told you, it's not a place for young people. You young people out there, you better go into hiding, okay? They don't want no part of you. Gotta keep checking his facts. Heavy duty stuff. Come over the facts. Says special thanks to Jimmy J. J. Walker of KKAR Omaha, Nebraska, who had President Aventura. dot com spokesperson, uh, spokesperson Bernie Siegel on his show on November eighteen. The same to WIOD in Miami. WIOD in Miami. What the talk show have they got on here? None. All Ventura supporters should spread the good word. This is this is on the uh, Ventura for President website. This is from Eric. I don't get it. But never they must have the wrong station. Huh? They must have the wrong station. W I D. Set them straight, Eric. Yes, get them straightened out, Eric. And don't bug me with this crap right now. Here's the update on this story, which you've been hearing about. Aquinas principal on leave after car incident. The principal of a Fort Lauderdale prep school has taken a leave of absence while school officials investigate an accident in which he crashed his car into a bush while giving a former student a ride. There's no fact in, in the church. William Heller, principal at St. Thomas Aquinas High School, of course a Catholic high school, told police he crashed his silver Toyota Camry because he was afraid the former student would rob him. But the student, a 16-year-old Fort Lauderdale resident, said the car ran into the bush after he tried to turn, off, turn it off because the principal had been touching him and would not let him out police said. A police report was made, but neither Heller nor the student would press charges. Efforts to reach Heller were unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. We're looking into the incident to determine the circumstances, said Monsignor Vincent T. Kelly, supervising principal at St. Thomas. There are conflicting accounts of it. Heller went on paid leave Wednesday, school officials said. A Fort Lauderdale police officer was sitting in his patrol car on a surveillance operation in the 1600 block of Northeast 9th Street at 1030 p.m. September 15 when he saw the crash. The officer reported seeing the boy jump out and hit and kick the driver. He then saw the youth run from the car shouting, get the F away from me. The youth who attended St. Thomas during his freshman year There's no fact in, in the church. said Heller offered him a ride on Sunrise Boulevard, then refused to let him out, the report said. Heller, who suffered minor cuts on his face, told the officer he offered the youth a ride to be nice. He wanted to be nice. That's what I always called it. Sure. Wouldn't it be nice? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T line twenty two till two at QAM. This is five sixty QAM. Hey, One moment, cover. Please. No, this thing is uh, crashing. What? It's crashing. It's yeah. Crashing and burning the goddamn uh, audio vault. 
I'll have to go uh, load up and fire this. I was just going to go room. take a leak, as a matter of fact. I well, I would have come back like three seconds sooner, but I was like halfway out of my chair to go take a leak. Maybe I'll take a leak in a wastebasket here. One moment, please. Hey, yeah, somebody out there run our commercials. We're on the 1134 break, by the way. It starts with Pollo Tropical. 1134? 134, 138. <laughs> Central time. Well, the log is cut off That's over here. Uh, Rocky Mountain time. Yeah, time. Yeah, whatever. The log off. I can't run spots out of here. So what does that mean? So we just keep going? Yeah, I just tried to reboot it. It's uh, got the... The audio vault down. just died? It just, just crashed died. in the crashed. middle of the show? Well, we can't. We don't want to be on here without running spots on this station. That's the only reason we're here is to run spots to make Luann happy, make her look good. We're ready. What do we do now? 138. Yeah, they'll run them out of the other room, okay, because i got to go take a leak. I mean, otherwise I would sit here. It makes no difference to me. They're paying me to sit here in the chair, but I have to pee real bad. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> just open up the mic and tell me when you're ready to play that yeah, spot right there, Wiener. Yeah, just open up the mic. It's informal, okay? There's nobody listening anyway, all right? Especially after I read that letter, which I'll read it again, by the way, before the end of the hour, especially now that we got all this extra time. So what are we going to do now? Because i got to go pee. Wiener's going to queue up the break and fire it off? Yeah. All right. Who is? Somebody is. Stand by, okay, audience. Don't tune us out because it might be pretty entertaining here in the last of 20 minutes. We got Hank coming up at two, and of course, at least he's in the other room. His stuff works in it, I think. What if their stuff crashed? We might lose money. Oh, we don't want to do that. We don't want to have to. Oh, thank God, none of my spots are left here. That's good. See, that's excellent. Nice going there, Neil. Oh! All right. Just let us know when you're ready in there, John. Hey, just let us know. Fire off something. Well, yeah, I got to go pee. Please play something. Like the bird, just play something. Do something in there. What? I mean, they keep opening the door, but why don't they uh, fire it? Yank it. Crank it. Stop. This is Sports Radio 560 QAM. The old God. In theaters now, from the producer of The Sixth Sense, it's The Seventh Sense. I smell all the people. Oh, me too. They smell like Ben Gay. No, like mothballs. They smell like albacore. No, like tour polish. The Seventh Sense. No, like an albacore stuffed with mothballs. <laughs> Showing now. Okay, it's uh, 144 at 560 WQM, 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T line. So we'll play the last break in there. Is that what we're going to do? Because our audio vault has just <laughs> crashed. Hey, listen, that's the way it goes, you know, so we miss a few spots. We'll bill them for it anyway. Here's Miami. Hello. Miami. Let's try Kendall. Hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. One big question. Why is Bill Lindsay gone? Why is he gone? Yeah, who they trade him for again? Simpson? Todd Simpson, yeah. He he's gone because he was non-productive the last two years. That's why he's gone. That's, oh, okay. Oh, well, my brother moved to Iowa, and he's wondering what is the, the best package to have for the uh, satellite dish, the NHL package, or the uh, like MSG stuff? Center ice. Center ice for the NHL? Center ice, maybe. It's all right, on there. Okay. okay. Here's a payphone in Carroll City. Hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, I just heard you read that letter. I called that, I think it was Monday on, uh, or I think Tuesday, when uh, we, we were talking about the uh, professional suicide that uh, the station is going to cause uh Catering to the Simpson, bringing him in for their crap. There's uh -huh. well, officially number one doing no more business with WIOD. What's I'm that? sorry, 560. <laughs> yeah, I'll get the right yeah. question anyway. 560. Yeah. And, it, and it's going to happen to the rest of those salespeople, not only the station. Now, now, see, again, you're lumping in all the people in our sales department. And all no, no, the ones that rubbed elbows with them. Yeah. That, those, not all of them. Who, well, there were, there were two sales holes that I know of. One was Luann Winnick, the other is. Uh, is uh, Roy. and of course no. our promotions a Sam Duque who's just an asshole anyway. Yeah, the ones who felt the who need to get sitting, needed... who I see is sitting is at his desk at this moment as I speak. You know, the ones who felt the, the need to get an autograph our Kef or our Keflon needed... promotions man, yes. Yeah, the ones who needed an autograph, the ones that right, needed that's a picture right. with the them. suckholes, the suckholes who are willing yeah. to sacrifice the reputation of the radio station and all the rest of us for their own ego and for their childishness, yes. Yeah, aside from the fact that this is obviously misappropriation of that's not going to do too well for the station either. Yeah, we're still waiting to find out where the other 22... All right, Uncle Neil. Okay, thanks. He wasn't listening to a word that I said. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Here's Pembroke Pines. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Neil? Okay, sir. Uh, first off, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, I tried to get the CD today, but uh, like George was saying, I guess that you guys have only had a short run of them. Is that correct? Or something, the CDs? Well, on the spec CDs, yeah, we, I don't, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but I can't tell you which stores they're going to be in, but they'll be in all of them tomorrow. But you'll, but you'll have the Sawgrass, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Um, well, and what, what were you saying? Something about I heard earlier in the week, like there's some like a uh, like a keychain or something like that you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, we have we have CDs, cassettes, the T-shirts, and then this year we got a keychain. It's got like the little buttons on it with the little uh, <laughs> sounds like oh, you know one button show. and the drops rotate. It's got how many? One button and the drops rotate with eight drops. Oh, on. they rotate with eight? Yes. All right. They sit on rotate around stuff right. like that, like in a circle. Like a circle, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. Like, like a, a Miami circle. Yeah. <laughs> Only this one don't cost twenty five million. Exactly. You know what? I kind of like your idea when you're talking about about the circle that you should cut the circle out, send it out to sea, and put all those people out there that like to hang out with OJ. Right. And just put them out there. Put them out in Biscayne Bay. Put them near Cuba. Actually, that would be actually. Yeah. Put Mayor Pinga in the middle. He can be the pivot man. He can. <laughs> he can play soggy biscuit. All right. And uh, just want to say, you know what? I think. Uh, I think it's great that uh, you, Manich, and uh, Goldberg don't put up with no crap from way over there. Okay. All right. See you. Again. We're trying. See okay. you. We're trying, but I'll tell you that's a specialty in this place. They they got an unlimited supply, baby. They got a bucket full of crap that you like you never saw in your life. It's a refillable bucket of crap, and it just never ends. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. I will read the letter again right toward the end of the hour because it bears uh, reading again and again and again. To show you that it wasn't just a bunch of a sour pie here at uh, the station, you know, looking for something to get bent out of shape about. It was just absolutely grotesque and unacceptable and uh, gruesome. And then, of course, topped off by this picture in the Herald this morning. We're going to show you a thing or two, okay, mister? This is a celebrity. This is somebody famous. Yeah, you latch on to him. In fact, why don't they all go off and run off into the sunset with him? That sounds good to me. All the OJ fans we got around here, just run off and uh, go into business with him. You'll see how much business you're going to do. Here's a mobile in Coconut Creek. Hello. Yeah, hey, Neil. It's... Yes, you sir. There? I'm here. Yeah, I was listening to you earlier about complaining about the schools. And uh, it's funny, my, my kid gets picked up with the bus. The lady, she's so rude. She doesn't even say hello. I mean, Forrest Gump, uh, you know, wasn't picked up by the bus. Was nice does she, does she look at all like Aunt Joe Mama by any chance? A little bit, yeah, uh-huh. a little bit. Broward, yeah. you know, Coconut Creek. But, uh-huh. uh, I mean, she doesn't even say hello, doesn't say good morning, and uh, just says get on the bus, and that's it. Get on the effing bus. That's it. And then sit where you, leg. And, and she says, I'll tell you where to sit, and my kid's taking off on the bus, and she's crying. What a way to go to school. Unbelievable. Okay. That's all I got, Neil. Thanks for the good news. All right, buddy. What do you say? His kid is what, jerking off on the bus? Five six seven oh five. Isn't that what he said? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the AT and T wireless line. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got Neil. Uh, I drank grape juice because OJ kills. Here's Miami. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? Great. Hey, I just wanted to say I thought it was fantastic uh, the stance the country club took. Uh, I thought that was great. And I had a question. I mean, the talent on that station obviously is what drives it, not the uh, right. the morons behind That's this right. whole thing. That's right. Sam Duque, our production's uh, farce, he ain't bringing one dime into this radio station. He doesn't have any show. He doesn't have any ratings. Nobody's buying advertising on this station because he's got a job for life here. And uh, and the same, of course, is true with Roy. him. Well, what, uh, I mean, uh, are you guys all tied up with multi-year contracts? I mean, couldn't you all just basically tell the ownership, hey, nice knowing you, and we're taking our talent well, well, elsewhere? Well, let me ask you something. Does that make any sense to you that everybody, that all the talent is going to bail out when you got a couple of uh, lunkheads in here screwing it up? That's not usually the way that it works in a real business. So we're going to, like, uh, wait a few days and see if this is a real business or not, if they mean business or just uh, monkey business. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I guess the, the position, the ownership, would take would would really uh, let you guys know what uh, kind yeah, of yeah whether, whether they're serious or not. I mean, we keep hearing a good game, and I had Greg Reed was in here earlier this morning about ten thirty and busting the gut and getting all psychotic about this stuff. But let, we'll see now if he's really serious or if he's just going to give these people a free ride like they've had for way too long. Because maybe if you know, like you, Mandich and uh, Hammer moved down to Dow, maybe they can get those guys with OJ and OJ on the air and have their own little shows. There you go. So Sounds good to me. Sounds excellent. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, hey, have a great day, pal. All right. That was a good uh, suggestion, too, by the way. Only played that once today.